We are a month into the college football season, and the Bears are finally back home. The home opener on campus for former Michigan and NFL star Tyrone Wheatley, the new head man of the Morgan State football program. Morgan fans ready to fill up Hughes Stadium to see Wheatley's Bears. Winning the conference opener in front of the home crowd would be something special. It's time to strike up the band. It's football time again at Morgan State. Good evening and welcome to Hughes Stadium on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland for the conference opener in the MEAC, the 1-3 and three North Carolina Central Eagles in town to face the 0-3 oh Morgan State Bears. It's MEAC College Football on ESPN3. Hi everybody, great to see you tonight. I'm Phil Shanner alongside my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. We have two new head coaches tonight. We already talked about Coach Wheatley and Trey Oliver. He's back at North Carolina Central, back home. His defense leads the country with 13 takeovers on offense. Coach Oliver would like to run the football, and that's where we pick up our spotlight players. They'd like to run the ball with Isaiah Totten. Totten has been one of those guys that has been a star since he stepped foot on campus. When all things don't go well, they know they can lean on the 5'10", 200-pound tailback from Apex, North Carolina. Emory Morgan State may have the best linebacking group in the entire conference. Rico Kendry, he's the leader. And he's one of those guys that you look for to be your cornerstone player. Can get sideline to sideline, outstanding defender, and is also a black college Hall of Fame Player of the Year candidate. Offenses struggled for Morgan State and Coach Wheatley, but one player who's still putting up big numbers, wide receiver, Minasha Bailey, he's been awesome. And he's been so awesome that there's NFL scouts that have been coming to Morgan State to check him out because he has done an outstanding job the last two weeks, had a big game against the Army Black Knights. You ready to get the MEAC going? Absolutely. It's always a great time to be here at Morgan State. Great football. Tyrone Wheatley's the head coach. Isaiah Oliver's out there. We have a lot to talk about here in Baltimore. It's going to be fun. The games, well, they mean more. It's the MEAC Conference opener. Eagles, Bears, NC Central, and Morgan. It's MEAC football on ESPN3, and the kickoff is next. Your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? Back at Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, on the campus of Morgan State University for the MEAC opener. Good crowd filing into Hughes Stadium. The Bears are finally home. Coach Wheatley taking over the Bears. The fifth coach in seven years at Morgan State. North Carolina Central, they have a new coach as well. Central got their first win of the season last week. Their first home game at Dorm 45-7 over Elizabeth City State. We're underway. This MEAC Saturday night special here on ESPN3. Cofield with the return across the 40-yard line. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 42. So good field position for the Morgan State Bears after that return by Cofield. It's a great way to start your ball game by getting yourself set up near the 50-yard line. Excellent return. The wall opened up pretty wide, and he was able to score through and pick up a bunch of yards, setting that Morgan State Bear offense up in a great situation. Morgan State's offense has struggled in their first three games, only scoring 12 points, averaging 238 yards of total offense, 63 yards through the ground, 170 through the air. So this is an offense that has struggled, but they're looking to get better. They had a 14-7 lead. So Eric Green, our official tonight, tells us that Morgan State has those double numbers, and they had two players on the field at the same time with those two numbers. So they're going to have to re-kick the football, so that return by Cofield will not count. That's a first. <laughs> Usually you have those situations cleared up to where, okay, this guy's on offense, this guy's on defense, and you never see this situation play out like we just saw. It's the first time for everything. Here's the first home game for Morgan State. And there is a look at Trey Oliver. Back home, he played at North Carolina Central. He was an Eagle, was at Southern last year. So he was in the SWAC, has done well, and is very excited to be back at North Carolina. It means a lot to him at North Carolina State because he was a former Eagle. So we'll re-kick things. We get a redo here tonight in this MEAC opener. Two other MEAC games played this afternoon, one on Thursday night that you watched on ESPNU. 
kick in the end zone. Cofield decides not to take it out and takes a knee. It'll be a touchback, and Morgan State, instead of having the ball at the 42-yard line after the penalties and the re-kick, they'll have the ball at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the Morgan State Bears, this offense that I mentioned struggling, but DeAndre Harris at quarterback, he's the senior leader, and they believe that he can get things going. 483 yards passing this year with three touchdowns. Johnson, a freshman running back. Williams, a freshman running back. That offensive line is very young, double tight ends. They like to use the tight ends. And, of course, we already mentioned Bailey. The wide receivers are good. Watch out for Xavier Gervet, who had a great season last year. And Morgan State just trying to get this offense going. They believe they have the proper players in place. And they're hoping here is to win the MEAC. And the players like that goal. Handoff goes to Joshua Chase. Chase gets around the outside, breaks a tackle, and Chase gets 11 yards. And a first down, 11-yard run by the senior running back from Washington, D.C., Joshua Chase on the outside. Yeah, they did a great job right there, just sealing that corner, allowing Chase to get outside. We've seen him before. He's a strong runner, breaks a lot of tackles. You see right there another great start on an opening play for Morgan State. Chase started against Bowling Green the first game of the season, and he didn't do much was limited to 20 yards on nine carries and then kind of lost his job as the starting running back. The handoff to the right side. A couple more yards on a first down run. That time it was Johnson. Johnson, the freshman, they expect a lot out of him. He's from Baltimore, Maryland. 29 carries, 48 yards, and a touchdown. He had his first career college touchdown last week, a 25-yarder in the game against Army. Central did a great job on that particular play, stringing out the run, not really getting close in. Why they stopped it for a minimal game. One yard gain, they give the ball, pull it away from Chase, and Harris has the completion on the outside. They want to get players in space, and that is White with a first down run into Eagles territory. Well designed play. They faked it to Chase and the throw to White in space. Three plays, three times we saw these guys get out on the perimeter. So they're attacking the weak spot of that central defense that has done a great job trying to bottling things up on the interior, but they're leaving themselves vulnerable on the perimeter. First and 10 for Morgan State. On that play, good enough for 20 yards. Harris to throw, has the completion to Gravette. Gravette with the catch. And close to another first down, an eight-yard pickup on that pass play. Harris, the quick hitter to Gravette. Let's take a look at the Eagles' defense, and here's what they're known for. They lead the country in takeaways, 13. They lead FCS and FBS with seven interceptions, six fumbles that they recovered. They topped the MEAC and ranked third in the NCAA Division I FCS with seven interceptions. The Eagles already surpassed last season's total of six interceptions, so they are ball hawks. They need a turnover here as Morgan State is driving on their first chance in this game. Harris under center. The reverse. Goes to the right side to Warfolk. And he's going to run the football close to a first down, and he has a first down. So I think he was thinking about throwing that football downfield and then decided to run for the yards he needed for the first. Smart play by Wesley Wolfong right there. Usually you see a guy that get that end around, he's going to throw it regardless. He did better by tucking and running, picking up the first down. Again, a smart, heady play by another Morgan State Bear off to a fantastic start to this offensive series. So Morgan State, they've struggled to get first downs in their first three games. So this is a good sign for the Bears, their first home game of the season. The handoff to Williams. Williams across the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. That's where he was stopped. Not a bad first down run for Williams. He's at one of those bigger backs, six foot 215, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Not the size of his coach, Tyrone Wheatley size, but he's a nice size running back in the stable of running backs. So far, this offensive line of Morgan State has done a great job in moving guys off the spot. And of course, Gatlin is wears the, another number, but Williams was on the carry there. Gatlin plays defense in those double numbers for Morgan State. And off straight ahead. Again to Williams. 
everything has been safe so far for Morgan State. Short pass, maybe an end around pass that we saw earlier in the series, but it's been run, 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 safe outlet throw to your receiver to get outside. So now is their first challenge. It's third and two. Let's see what they do here on this particular down. This is a critical situation. You want to see them excel in this situation moving forward. Morgan State has been terrible on third downs this year, just 24% on third downs. Let's see what they do on this third and two. Harris is going to throw it. Has the completion to Gravette in the first down. Down shy of the 10-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds right past the 10-yard line, down to the nine. So it's going to be a first and goal for the Morgan State Bears. Harris, the quick hitter to Gravette. Not a bad play call at all. We talked about him in the open. Gravette is a guy that was on the scene last year for them. They were very impressed with his play as a freshman, wanted to get him involved. Now as a sophomore, he's starting to grow into that role. If you have a tight end in college football, you're going to be dangerous, dangerous offensively. Gravette's second catch was good enough for 16 yards and a first and goal for Morgan State. Grinding and pushing is the senior, Joshua Chase. Chase got on the scene as a sophomore, battled some injuries, but he's been one of those guys that has been through this program, been through different head coaches. But Joshua Chase, a senior back in the fold here in the mix for the Morgan State Bears. You like to see these backs falling forward like they're doing. They want to impress their coach, who was an All-American at Michigan, by running the football like he did back in his college days. So, again, great start from Morgan State. More impressive start by this offensive line. I think a good mix of play calling here uh, by the Morgan State Bear coaching staff. Here's a look at Coach Wheatley, father of five Joshua Chase right side across the five yard line and down to the three Chase's third carry of this opening drive the Morgan State Bears that started on their own 25 yard line it's been an impressive opening drive by Morgan State team looking for their first win of the season give coach Whit we uh, Wheatley his first win here at Morgan State Last year, he was in the NFL, coached the Jacksonville Jaguars running backs. Before that, with the Buffalo Bills, and the running back coach was Syracuse. was with Doug Marone, and the college level and the NFL level. And, of course, as you mentioned, great player at Michigan and played with the Giants and the Raiders in the NFL. So he has that experience. That's something a lot of these young college athletes want. They want to know how to get to the next level. Coach Wheatley knows how to do that. And there is a timeout on the field with 8.59 to go in the first quarter. And the Morgan State Bears are knocking on the door here in Baltimore, Maryland. We'll be back after this. Back to Hughes Stadium on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. And the 11th play coming up for Morgan State, the third and goal from the three-yard line, looking to punch it in on their first offensive opportunity. Chase, short of the goal line, gets down to the one, and that's where he will be stopped. So a fourth and goal coming up for Coach Wheatley. What do you do here, fourth and goal, your first home game? You've been pushing it on an 11-play drive. The former running back in me wants to give the ball to the running back one more time, and that's why it's great to have a head coach that's a running back because I know he's thinking the same thing. The offensive line has done a great job in moving Central off the spot, and it wouldn't surprise me to see another dive here by Morgan State just to pound that thing in there across the goal line. Well, here we go. Fourth and goal from the one. Williams, the freshman power back in the backfield. They give it to Williams, and he is not in. North Carolina Central Eagles defense comes up and shuts it down, and there you see the celebration by Dante Fair, one of the senior leaders of this team, was there to make sure that Williams couldn't get in. Yeah, that was a great job defensively by North Carolina Central. I know it's not a takeaway, but it's just as good as one because they turned the ball over inside the five-yard line just inside the one-yard line so a great job defensively you can classify that as bend but not breaking he did a great job in standing when he had to at the goal line outstanding defensive play right there by North Carolina Central so the drive ends on the one-yard line started on the 25 was very promising good mix of run and pass Harris was two for two on the drive Chase had four carries for 18 yards the Eagles Trying to push that pile. On the outside, it's Totten. Totten running to the 10-yard line and a pickup of nine. So a second and short coming up for the Eagles. An offense that found their way last week against Elizabeth City. 
391 yards of total offense last week. And let's take a look at the starters. Totten, the running back, he is very good. Martin, McDaniel, Barnes, McCoy, some good wide receivers. And that offensive line, Andrew Dale, the preseason all MEAC second teamer, leads the offensive line. And Davius Richard is the starting quarterback, the freshman making his third start. Davius went from fourth string when camp started to now making his third college football start. The give straight ahead, good enough for first down. They give it to Isaiah Totten, 5'10", 200 pounds. Let's take a look at the Morgan State defense. The linebackers are very good, and the defensive line, well, they've been playing great. Great pressure from the defensive ends, but you talk about the linebackers, Kennedy, McBurrow, and Washington, very good. The secondary, Small and Garns and Gatlin. Boy, these guys have a pretty good defense. They're hoping to do things here this year in the MEAC. They feel that's the strength of their team, that the defense is a little ahead of the offense. They keep it on the ground to Totten. He's across the 20-yard line and down to the 21. Eight-yard pickup will bring up a second and short. So a lot of Totten here. They had it at the one and pushed it all the way out with a couple of runs by our spotlight player, Isaiah Totten. Well, they were outflanked right there. They were beat by a lineman pre-snap, and I'm not surprised they ran that way because they had one extra man to get that play off. And the ball is nearly intercepted out of the hands of Ryan McDaniel, the transfer from Tulsa. He had it and then dropped the football, and it was almost picked up by a Morgan State Bear. Take another look. Yeah, great job right there, just being heads up. He was playing leverage, trying to force him back inside to his help. Maybe the receiver saw someone coming and kind of got his head up too quickly and drop that football, but another short situation here for Morgan State or here for their defense in trying to get a stop, but Central has done a great job in, in getting outside on the perimeter with their running game. The Eagles 30% on third downs this year, so they have not played well on third downs themselves. Totten gets the handoff, has the first down and more. Needed a yard, got four yards, and that moves the chains. So it's been a lot of Isaiah Totten. They wanted to establish that run. We said that in our open, and that's what they're doing here on their first drive. Love the play call here. You're bringing that guard around. You get a guard on Carl Garns, who is a tremendous player, but he's a defensive back trying to take on a lead block by an offensive lineman. That's never going to work. So that play, again, great design by Central, getting their guys, their big guys on little guys, and allowing their running back to run free reign down the middle. Totten gets a break. He's on the sidelines. A heavy dose of Totten for the Eagles to get things going here first quarter, their first opportunity on offense. Fresh legs in the game. That is Jordan Freeman, the redshirt junior. 142 yards. It's just his 26th carry of the season. Has a touchdown. Trey Oliver, of course, the new head coach back home where he played at North Carolina Central, was at Southern last year and has a lot of experience, 25 years of coaching college football and is excited to be back home. One thing you have to remember about North Carolina Central, it's just their ninth season of full NCAA Division I FCS competition in the MEAC. The Eagles won 11 conference championships as members of the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Incomplete pass there. Tended receiver was E.J. Hicks, the smallest wide receiver of this taller wide receiver core for the Eagles. One of the first plays we saw, we've seen either offense attack downfield. Uh, receiver probably was supposed to settle right there. Quarterback expected him to settle right there in the zone. He reached back, ball flew past him, but I think that was more miscommunication on the receiver as far as judging where he was in the zone, settling down, but he loved the aggressiveness in the passing game to go vertical down the field as opposed to going east and west. So third and seven from the 30 for the Eagles. Their second third down of their first opportunity on offense. The MEAC opener here in Baltimore, Maryland. Plenty of time for the freshman to throw the football, and he has the completion at the 41-yard line. Nice catch there. Coming up to make the, the grab was Chaplin. Watch this decisive throw right here by Richard. Just a feet was planted in the ground. Good base throw on the football and delivered a dart. Doesn't look like a freshman. At all. A true freshman making his third start. This, I mean, he came in as the fourth string. 
And then they had a player, uh, Codwell, who tr- decided to use the transfer portal after the first game of the season. He was the guy that was supposed to be the, the starter. And then they had Xanders. And here are the freshman who coach says really is the future of the program. So the Richard to Chaplin pass gives him a first down from the 41-yard line. The Eagles are moving. Pass there incomplete. And that's a lot of pressure on a, a true freshman from Florida. Pretty interesting. He's a four-sport athlete. Was Mr. Everything in the Florida region in high school football. And he finds himself here starting his third game at North Carolina Central. On that particular play, you saw him make the right read with just a bad throw. And immediately after that, you saw him tap his chest like, hey, that's on me. That's my fault. Great leadership right there by the freshman. Coach Oliver loves what he sees out of Richard. Second down. Hand off. Straight ahead and only a couple of yards as they get the ball back to Isaiah Totten. Totten gets his sixth carry of the game already. Cameron, Cameron Chesley right there, the defensive lineman with the stop. Big number 12 getting in there and, and crashing down to make that stop. They've had issues when they pulled those linemen, so he was able to beat the linemen to the spot and make the tackle for a minimal game. Third and seven now from the 44 for the Eagles. Morgan State looks like they jumped. They were showing pressure, and a penalty marker is down. Wait for our official Eric Green tonight in charge of the crew. We'll let us know about the infraction. Unforced errors, they call them. Can't jump off sides. So we talked about this with Coach Wheatley, and he said we have to cut down on our penalties. Discipline, discipline. Penalties will kill us. And he mentioned that numerous times in our conversation this week. There was a case where now you go from a third and long to a third and short because of the penalty. The Eagles at the their own 49-yard line. And there you see a mental mistake by North Carolina Central, who also deals with the penalty issue. In the conversation we had with Coach Oliver, he said the same thing that Coach Wheatley said. Start. Start. Okay. Well, now, Quint Champlin, if he was playing the CFL, that would have been outstanding forward motion. Or arena football. Exactly, but you can't do that in the MEAC. You can't do that in college football. He went motion, then started forward, and he realized as soon as he did, it was like, snap, that's all me. I'm going to have to run extra during this week of practice. So two back-to-back penalties, one on Morgan, and then one on Central kind of wipes it out, and we have a third and seven again. The freshman has the completion, far sideline. Good job there and a good catch by E.J. Hicks. Hicks' his sixth catch of the season. Gives the Eagles a first down in bare territory. Sometimes great plays are nullified by greater plays. And you saw a great play by Morgan State setting that edge, putting that quarterback in the bind because he wanted to continue to roll out. But he made an accurate throw to the sideline and allowed his receiver to run after the catch, which is why he was able to pick up the first. So great play by Morgan State, even greater play by the Eagles. 11-yard pickup on that pass play. Harris in the pocket, has time to throw the football, far sideline again, and has the completion, a short completion out of the backfield is Isaiah Totten with the grab. I have to say, the pace of this, of both offenses have been impressive. They're moving the football successfully against each other's defense. Short passing game a lot for Central. A lot of, a lot of it was the running game for Morgan State, but both offenses have gotten off to a great start. Just 2.15 to go here in the first quarter. MEAC opener on ESPN3 from Baltimore, Maryland. Second and eight from the 43. Totten gets a couple more. Maybe a yard. Totten with the carry. Heavy dose of Totten so far in this game. His seventh carry. He's been busy. Of course, on the tackle, getting him from behind. So it's third down. Was Chesley. Well, they like Chesley. He's come on. He wasn't a guy that was originally in the starting lineup, but he worked his way in there pretty quickly. And the new coaching staff and Coach Wheatley and some of the new guys on his staff realized that Chesley is a player. Has some great speed from that defensive end. Here comes the pressure by the Bears and a big sack. Turn right into it. 
And down goes the freshman quarterback making the sack is Hebram. He's not quite boomer sizing with the play fake yet, but did a great job trying to influence. But Morgan State's defense was not fooled at all. They had a screen call on that particular play, but that defensive line got back there far too fast for him to set up and get that football over their head. So great job of recognizing what was going on by Morgan State. Ibram with the sack, a loss of 11 yards and a fourth down. The Eagles will punt the football to the Morgan State Bears. Taking a hit on his way out of bounds on the return by Wolfolk. That's where Morgan State will have the football back. They drove from the 25 all the way down to the one, and then at a fourth and goal, weren't able to punch it in. We'll see what they can do with their second opportunity on offense. There's 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless on the MIAC opener on ESPN3. Father's life, these are my people. Back at Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland for our MEAC opener. No score between the Bears and the Eagles. 40 seconds to go first quarter. The Bears with their second opportunity on offense. Harris, the handoff. Not much there at all for Johnson. Johnson, his second carry of the game. It's just a great job right there, just crashing down, squeezing that that lane for him to run through. It's a great job defensively. There is Royster. Royster, Senior. yep, second in the league this year with four and a half stops for a loss and three sacks for Royster. Solid at the defensive end position. Second and nine for Morgan State. Big hole this time for Johnson up the middle in the Eagle territory, still on his feet. Down the sidelines he goes, and he's rustled out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Inside the 10 at the 8 on the final play of the first quarter. A big hole opens up for Johnson, and the Bears are in business. It's MEAC football on ESPN3. We'll see if Morgan State can get on the board first when we come back with the second quarter. We are through one quarter at Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. No score, but after that 56-yard run by Johnson, the Eagles are on their heels as the Bears are knocking on the door for the second time in this game. Handoff goes to Johnson. He gets a little closer to that goal line, but Morgan State has been here before. They got all the way down to the one-yard line, and a fourth and one were unable to get into the end zone. The Eagles held them, but Johnson, that 56-yard run, his longest run, of the season for the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. So second and goal now, the ball's resting on the two yard line. Morgan State trying to give us our first score of the night. The handoff, straight ahead and he was buried. Patrick Connor, the red shirt sophomore in there to immediately hit Johnson. What a play by Connor, you're stuck about, he almost had the handoff, Emery. Yeah, he came through on a constant free reign to the ball carrier, six feet, 230. With good leverage, he's going to bring you down to the ground. Jabril Johnson, the running back, however, has had his success because he has a little bit of something extra in the boost department, the first department, more so than the other backs on his, on his roster. But great job right there by the linebacker making that stop in the backfield. Third and goal from the four, Harris. Looks like he's going to run the football on the outside. And he is tracked down and brought down by Patrick Connor again. Connor back-to-back -back big plays for the Eagles. Again, the Bears in the, re in the red zone unable to get points, maybe. Big fourth and goal coming up, second time of the game. But just good job right there reading that play inside out. You see him getting inside, but then having the speed and acceleration to get to the outside and chase him down. So great job right there by Patrick Connor, the sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. So Nicholas O'Shea will get an opportunity to put points on the board. Three of four this year in field goals, as long as a 39-yarder. This is a 22-yarder for O'Shea. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Nicholas O'Shea puts the Bears on the board. 
three nothing on a five play 60 yard drive that ends up three for the Bears with O'Shea's field goal. The hometown kid, the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, Jabril Johnson, the big 56-yard run. Johnson did most of the damage on that drive, a six-play, 60-yard drive, ended with a 21-yard field goal by Nicholas O'Shea. And there's a look at Johnson, who decided to stay home from Baltimore, Maryland, and play at Morgan State for Coach Wheatley. Got a guy who's a running back in the NFL, a big-time college. Why not? This is the head coach. Good move if you're a running back to play for Coach Wheatley. Eagles on the return across the 35-yard line, and there's a scrum. The whole team is around the ball. Wouldn't go down. It pushed it all the way across the 40 to the 41. A little bit of rugby here yeah, at, at yeah, Morgan State. I was, State. I was uh, trying to find a sport. <laughs> a rugby game broke out, Emory. We came for football, but we got rugby on that kickoff return. A little bit of everything here at Hughes Stadium. Let's see what the Eagles can do with the football. We saw a lot of Totten, seven carries. 32 yards so far tonight. Morgan State with their first home game of the season, their first three games on the road. But we also saw why they chose to go with Davius Richard, the quarterback. A lot of maturity shown on that opening series for the Eagles. Richard, three of six for 24 yards. The pitch to Totten. Totten. Across the 45 down to the 49 yard line. So a good first down run. Bring up a second and short after that pitch to Totten. He has what I like to call a good feel for the running game because he allowed his lineman to get out there, wash out that trash to the left side, and found that nice cutback lane across the middle of the field. So good feel for the running game by Isaiah Totten. And is showing his his leadership or his, his confidence in the running game being the junior that he is because of how he's running the football. Third in the MEAC in rushing this season for the junior. Second and eight for the Eagles. Totten gets it back. Has the first down and he's in the bear territory. Makes a man miss. And up to the 35 yard line before he stepped out of bounds. So another explosive run by Totten, his ninth carry of the night. And it's hard for running backs to really have that patience that, like he's showing here. And when I'm talking about patience, I'm talking about knowing when and where to turn on your speed. He was patient around the corner and then accelerated past the defender. 16-yard pickup by Totten. The Eagles averaging 135 yards a game rushing the football. Totten again. Tripped up before he got to the 30-yard line and stopped there. Yeah, what Central is doing is playing the numbers game. When you saw them push their three receivers out to the right side of the field, it was one-on-one -on, -one on the back side. It was like, hey, whether or not we have the numbers on, on this side, we'll just run this way instead of trying to throw a football downfield and get those big linemen on those linebackers and, and DBs. So that's why their running game is having success. Second and seven from the 37. Freshman steps up. Incomplete. Tried to throw a strike, but looking for Stevens, who couldn't hold on to the football. Stevens, a transfer from NC State, couldn't come up with the catch. Dante Small right there, the corner. The junior did a great job in coverage. You're going to see right here, this is a dark throwing by Richard. But Small coming back over the shoulder. Getting that arm around and batting that ball away. That's just a nice, great defensive play. By Dante Small. Dante Small had four interceptions last year, all MIAC first team honors. One of four MIAC players with at least three interceptions during the season last year. The freshman getting out of some trouble. Still on his feet, eyes downfield. Richard going to use his legs. Ball's in the air. And the Eagles have it. Down the sideline and into the close to the end zone they're going to say he's out at the one yard line the ball shot up in the air and stevens came down with it and ran it down to the one yard line after richard was just running for his life what a play outstanding job in evading the pressure like you talked about keeping his eyes downfield and good athleticism here to try to get the first but boom <laughs> ball pops up in the air to sean uh, uh stevenson the, the receiver stevens it was Johnny on the spot. He needed all of that 6'2", 220-pound frame to go up and get that football. 
to make the play. Stevens, the red shirt, junior from transfer from NC State. The handoff and in, Mookie Collar, touchdown, and the Eagles are on the board. The red shirt freshman, 5'10", 185 pounds, their short yardage specialist, gets the touchdown. And the Eagles match the Morgan State drive and field goal for the touchdown. Mookie Collar in for six. I mean, it won't get any easier than that. Just going right down Main Street on the inside. Morgan State's defense is still pretty shook on what happened to play before. And the point after is up and no good. Hits the crossbar. So NC Central has a 6-3 lead over Morgan State here in the second quarter. It's MEAC football on ESPN3. Back in Baltimore, Maryland. Latrell Mookie Collar, one-yard touchdown for North Carolina Central. Six-play, 59-yard drive, 2.30 off the clock. Central with a 6-3 lead over Morgan State. Pretty wild play. The quarterback Richard, the ball bounced in the air. And Stevens got it and set him up at the one-yard line. Cofield on the return for Morgan State across the 30-yard line. And that's where the Bears will have the football. Take a look at this wild play, Emery. It was a great job by the freshman not panicking, and then the ball just flew up in the air. Yeah, he broke like 17 tackles on that play to make a great play, showed off a little bit of wheels, and boom, just a great hit by Morgan State. And Deshaun Stevens, Johnny on the spot, and nearly got that ball to the end zone. Just a great job just being heads up and following the play, which ultimately led for, you know, to a touchdown for North Carolina Central. And we have an injured bear down on the field. That is Booker, the injured player. 6-3 game, 10-12 to go here, second quarter. And we'll step aside, be back with more from Baltimore, Maryland. The final Saturday in September. Good night to be on campus at Morgan State University, MEAC opener. Central with a 6-3 lead over Morgan State. The Bears with a football back. Harris gets the short completion. Run after catch for the Morgan State Bears. And Gravette, that's his third catch of the night. So all of Harris's completions have been to number 80, Xavier Gravette. And he's a guy that's 6'4", 225, a sophomore. And we talked to Coach Wheatley about the tight end position, how important it was. And this is one thing he brought up. It's like, hey, man, these guys are big physical athletes that can match up against these smaller, speedy defensive backs. Gives us an advantage. Good enough for 10 and another first down for Morgan State. Right up the middle, a big run by Chase this time. And he's tracked down. Down by the 15-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle. We had the long run from Johnson. This time Joshua Chase finds a big hole, but there might be a penalty, and there is a penalty marker down, Emory. That one could be coming back. Penalty marker laying on the 45-yard line. And that came out as soon as the ball was snapped, so that could be either a, an assortment of things. It could be offside, illegal procedure, could be illegal formation, so we'll see, but that flag came out pretty quickly. And they are talking things over. So Johnson, remember, had that 56-yard run, and Chase had the big run there. So Morgan State with the ability to run the football tonight. Here's Eric Green. We know it wasn't a hole. Offside. Defense. Number 22. There's no personal foul for number 77. Help is coming up. However, he has to leave the big game for one play. So the penalty is on Brian Mills of the Eagles. The penalty declined for offside. And of course, the uh, penalty will be declined. So the big run stands for Joshua Chase. Good for that senior who struggled in the opener against Bowling Green and and then kind of was shuffled out, but is back in the spotlight here on the home opener tonight for Morgan State with that big play for Joshua Chase setting up the Bears again on the first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Pass by Harris is intercepted down at the two-yard line. 
picked off. They lead the country. How about turnover number 14 and interception number 8? Are you kidding me? These Eagles get it done. Flying around the football, pun intended, and that was just a great job of falling back off in the coverage and finding himself around the ball to make a play. They had the tight end open. If, if you put a little bit more air on that football, that tight end's going to score easily, but just short-armed it. Defensive back was right there to make a play on it, and just a great job by that Eagles secondary. That was number 22, Brian Mills, the junior, 6'2", 170, got up and over the receiver to make that play. Again, he had the tight end open, breaking free across the formation, but you want to put a little bit more air on that football and allow your guy to go and run underneath it, but it's a great job in falling back off in the coverage by North Carolina Central. Interception number eight, turnover takeaway number 14. They lead the nation in both the FCS and FBS in that category, and Brian Mills comes up and makes the interception. Morgan State struggling in the red zone this year. And there's a timeout on the field with 9.16 to go here before the half. And it's not by happenstance that you have an inter a lot of interception, a lot of plays. You know, it's just the fact that we are used to making plays like that and generating turnovers, it becomes habit. And so guys are going to force themselves to try to make that play and you're going to see right here just going up and getting that football. Now, this play is under review. You just want to see where he landed, and it looks like he landed inside the one yard line. So this football is going to probably be moved back a little bit from where it currently sits at the two. What a great thing for Coach Oliver taking over a program to have something to, to kind of put out there to everyone, that they lead the entire country in any level in Division I in takeaways. Their eighth interception of the season, their 14th total turnover. No one else in the country has that many. It's pretty amazing what Coach Oliver and his defensive staff has done. But one thing they said, you know, Miami has, what, the turnover chain? Well, if you make a good play on defense and practice or in the game, you get your, your big face on the board back in Durham, North Carolina, on campus. So that's a pretty neat thing. And I guess Brian Mills will get his mug up on the board back in Durham for that interception. Well, you just want to reward great play and turn the ball over. It just gives you more chances to put points up on the board. And that's just the philosophy you have to teach because you have to practice that like you talked about every day in order for that to play itself out like it does in the game. So now the freshman quarterback, Richard, standing in his own end zone. Three of seven so far here tonight. The quick pass and the completion to Stevens. Stevens has the first down. And more to the 20-yard line. A good pass and catch. Stevens, the transfer from NC State, has a couple grabs here tonight. Now 10 catches on the season. Rico Kennedy is going to kick himself because he buzzed right past that window. Had he been a little bit more aware, that ball would have hit him dead square in the Morgan and State right there on his jersey. That pass play was good enough for 19 yards. Richard, incomplete. It's another miscommunication right there with the receiver. He's telling them, hey, man, you had a lot of room. You can settle down right there in that open space, and I'll get you the football. How many freshmen have that ability, right? Exactly. He's out there telling upperclassmen, here's what you need to do if you want the football. So they see something special in Davius Richard. The coach called him the future of the program. Went from four string to starter. And this has been a great program that has developed some really good quarterbacks. Malcolm Bell was one uh, doing a great job getting that team to the Celebration Bowl. Totten. Jordan Reed was another quarterback yep. here that did a great job in, in playing good football. So you can say that the MEX quarterback you has been North Carolina Central. Totten with a short carry across the 25 to the 26. Now third and five coming up. Four for five on third downs for North Carolina Central here in this first half. Not this time. The Bears defense shuts it down. Totten is patient enough, and they were going after that football too, Emory. Yeah, and we talked about how when you develop a mindset in running the football, the byproduct of that is that your defense would be great at stopping the run. So we're seeing the same level of aggressiveness from this Morgan State defensive front that we see from their offensive line because of how they play their offense, their defense will do a great job in doing so. That's why we're also seeing a great job by Central's defensive line, too. So 
a good strength versus strength battle here so far in this ballgame. Picaro will punt it away. The Wolfolk back to receive the punt. Catches it on the fly, and he's on the move. And stopped at the 49-yard line. That's where Morgan State will have the football down. 6-3 with 7.27 to go here in the second quarter. Phil Shaner along with Emery Hunt on ESPN3. Mehack football. Emery, you got a little look at Howard before you made the trip up here. Howard and Bethune-Cookman. We'll step aside. More to come. It's Miak football on ESPN3. Morgan State cheerleaders, they're saying, hey, we have the former Michigan and NFL star running back as our head coach, Tyrone Wheatley. This team's down 6-3. to three. Let's see what they can do with the football. DeAndre Harris, the senior quarterback in. Eagles showing blitz. And off and a tackle for a loss in the backfield. Nothing doing there. That's Foster, the red trip sophomore, coming up and making the stop. One of those nasty linebackers for the Eagles. That's a great job. That play was made by the defensive lineman. Just flying in there and beating that block, which opened up that lane for Foster to get through there and make that stop. So just a great job of playing team defense by Central. Williams lost a yard. Harris rolls out, fires, and incomplete. Was looking for Walfolk and short. Third down coming up. We have not seen number 13, Mr. Bailey. We're sharing the same brain because I said I was thinking the same thing. Hey, we've seen Vet, we've seen Walfolk, we haven't seen Bailey yet in this ball game. He's their big time playmaker, guy that you want to get the football to because of his speed but they haven't found a way to get him involved. And there he is, bottom of your screens where he's lining up. Inashe Bailey leads the MEAC in receiving yards. Hasn't been targeted yet today. Harris will keep it himself in Eagle territory as the first down and much more breaks a tackle. Harris still on his feet inside the 20 yard line and out of bounds at the 19. So three big explosive runs by the running backs and now by the quarterback, DeAndre Harris. Smart play by the receiver, Deontay White, right here. You're going to see on this long run, Harris does a great job in just getting outside and just using that speed. But White, the receiver, avoided the block in the back and just kind of threw his hands up and just kind of flashed in front of the defensive back and allowed that play to get, continue to go without penalty. Play goes for 35 yards. The handoff to Johnson couple there. So Morgan State, over 200 yards of total offense in this game. They've outgained North Carolina Central, but they trail on the scoreboard 6-3. to three. Thanks to those explosive running plays, Chase had a run for 41 yards. Johnson had one for 56 yards, and then that last run for Harris went for 35. The Bear likes it. And that would have gone for a long play had it not been for Jerome Foster, whose name he's called a lot tonight, making that one-on-one -on -one stop in the hole. Second and seven for 15 for the Bears. Williams gets the handoff. Tries to cut it back inside. Shout out to the Morgan State Bear mascot, man. It is a human night in Baltimore. He's out there grinding it out in that fur uniform. It's tough to wear fur. You know that. <laughs> Only later in the season will you show up with your first suit. Exactly. You'll wait till at least December for the first suit. <laughs> Third and six from the 14. That's a great idea, first suit. You got me thinking. <laughs> oh, no. Harris going to the end zone, and another one picked off. Wow. Two interceptions on the night, both by Brian Miles, and this is the team that continues to have turnovers. And how about interception number nine, takeaway number four. 15 on the season and that will, was probably caused because he got hit at the same time as he threw the football But you're not gonna overthrow a 6 2 175 pound corner with great leaping ability in Mills who was able to get up there and make that play so Mills has done a great job just Slow playing the receiver in almost in trail technique and just baiting the quarterback to throw a, a lollipop up there And he's been able to go up there sky and get the football Take another look at this Mills interception, his second of the night. Look, looking for Gravette and just stepped right in front of him. Again, I understand the shot play. He saw a big smile on Mills' face as he was on the ground with that interception. I understand going for the tight end versus the cornerback matchup, but Mills has made a ton of great plays tonight for that defense. Snap over the head of the freshman quarterback, and he was lucky. 
to be able to fall on that football inside the five yard line. And both of the interceptions were in the red zone for Morgan State. That was a fortunate play there by Richard, the freshman, to be able to fall on that snap well over his head. The game feels like it's going off the rails for both teams right now. Someone's going to take a timeout, get everybody back to neutral, and get them refocused on the task at hand. We just saw Rico Kennedy, one of the big play linebackers. This might be a time for Rico to come up and make a big play. Second and 26. The freshman in his own end zone, running for his life and throwing the football away. His attended receiver was E.J. Hicks. It was crazy if Hicks turns around. No one is near him. And maybe that's where your quarterback was going with the football. Richard was going with the football because no one was near the receiver. He was looking downfield as opposed to looking back at the QB. Chesley, number 12, was the one who was chasing the freshman. He did get out of the tackle box, so you have no attentional grounding. Let's see if Morgan State's defense can help out their offense here and get the football back or at least get their offense with some good field position with 4.18 to go before the half. Big moment here for the true freshman quarterback in his third college football start. Richard hands it off. Totten. Totten breaks through and gets to the 15-yard line. So it gets them a little more yardage than what they need. And Totten's been busy. That's Totten's 13th carry of the night. Watch this move in the hole right here by Totten. Just quick bang, bang. Just sacrifice his ankles in space and nearly pick up that first down on the drop play. What drill do you get those feet going like that? that those feet were choppy, right? They were yeah. able to make that move. That's the ladder drill. That, that keeps your feet moving, keep them busy, as coaches like to say. He showed a great deal of that in that open field opportunity, making that guy miss. Caro to punt it away. Fair catch called for at midfield, and that's where Morgan State will have the football as Warfolk on the fair catch of the punt. So Morgan State, they have 224 yards of total offense compared to just 126 from North Carolina Central, but those two turnovers basically in the, in the end zone, down in the red zone, have been the story, but this North Carolina Central Eagles team Leave the con uh, lead the country now with 15 takeovers. And it hasn't been a penalty field game. This has been turnovers at inopportune times uh, for Morgan State and also for Central. Six threes are score. Eagles with the lead. Bears with a football. Joshua Chase. Not much there. He was stopped by Darius Royster. Royster's having a big first half. This kid is pretty dominant. He assumed 17 takedowns behind the line of scrimmage a year ago, tied for second in the MEAC and 15th in the FCS, and forced four fumbles a year ago. Pretty disturbing player. He can get it done, Darius Royster. Chase again, falls across the 45-yard line, down to the 44. Big number 98, Miles Terman. We've seen him make a couple of big plays in this game. Uh, he's beating through a double team right there, fighting through a double team, and still was able to make that tackle. So that's determination, that's core strength, that's excellent technique, and that's just great overall defensive line play right there by Royster. I'm sorry, by uh, Terman. Third and four from the 44. When are they going to get the ball to Bailey? Hand off to Chase. Not fooled at all. The Eagles defense, they came to play. Parker makes the stop. The redshirt junior, Austin Parker, in that backfield in a hurry. We've seen a lot of guys defensively just cycle through the rotation, and each and every one has been a guy that has had to probably make a play in space, whether it's a tackle or a play on the ball, and even answer the call. So great defense and great job by this coaching staff of North Carolina Central. North Carolina Central defensively, two turnovers tonight, two interceptions by Mills. Now on the season, they have nine interceptions. Last year, they only had six the entire season. And here tonight, they have two, nine on the season, 15 on the year. You see right there, just a cramp right there by Gravette. He's been getting a lot of work, so I understand the cramp. And that also goes into, we talked about a humid night. Mm -hmm. uh, he's probably seen a lot of work as far as in the route running department. I'm not saying you want to take plays off in blocking, but if you're busy as a route runner and combined with what we're facing here tonight, 
with his humidity, it's no surprise that he's sitting there trying to get that cramp out. And that's one of the worst feelings as an athlete, boy. Gravett with three catches tonight, 81 degrees. The humidity is very high here in Baltimore, Maryland. 200 degree humidity. Now you're exaggerating. <laughs> Ball takes a bounce and was touched at the 20, and that's where the Eagles will have the football with 2.10 to go before the half. Coming up at half, we'll talk with the Morgan State Athletic Director and also the new basket, men's basketball coach at Morgan State. We'll look at some first-half highlights, also check the scores from around the MEAC and the standings early on in the MEAC season. That's all coming up during our halftime report here on ESPN3. They just showed a shot of, of Coach Wheatley, and, man, if those that hadn't seen him play at Michigan don't re remember how big of a back he was, but also remember how much of a sprinter he was. was. So this is impressive. Uh, that's just me being a fanboy right now based off how I grew up and watched him run. Totten makes a few miss, stays on his feet. That's not Totten. The run there, sorry, not Totten there. It was Jordan Freeman, new legs in. Freeman makes two guys miss and a big run for Jordan Freeman, the redshirt junior. Coaches want you to make the plays that are there to be made. He made the play. Defensive lineman in the backfield missed it. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage on that pass play. That run by Parker are the type of runs that, that just deflate you defensively because you had him stopped in the backfield. But just a great job by Parker making that first guy miss. As a running back, you're always supposed to make at least one guy miss on the play. He made five miss on that play and made a big gain as a result. Second and ten for the Eagles. Give it back to Freeman. Not the run he had before, but still falls forward for two yards. Had he kept his balance, man, he was off to the races because that offensive line did a great job of cleaning out everyone within the front seven. And he just couldn't keep his balance because that was going to go for a long run right there by Freeman. Third and eight, four of seven on third downs for the Eagles tonight. The freshman gets flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run the football into bear territory. Has the first down, still on his feet, gets a block down the sidelines. Goes the freshman in the end zone for the touchdown. What a run by Richard. Takes it all the way for the score. Check this out. Davis Richard just showed right there. He is a dual threat player because he not only took off, but he took off looking to score. He opened up his stride right there and started to weave his way back in and out of traffic like a Baltimore cab and down that sideline and stayed in bounds and got the touchdown. Impressive by the true freshman. Davius Richard goes 62 yards for the score. He was just running to get the first down. Then he realized that there was a lot of real estate. A couple of nice blocks, though, down the uh, sideline for him as well. The freshman, that was a big play. Just his third start, a true freshman. Yeah, they're they're going to waste their time with this review because all scoring plays was... are reviewed. So they'll take a look at it. He stayed in bounds once he tight broke that sideline. But just a great job of just weaving because he made it up in his mind that he was going to score. He wasn't going to try to run, pick up a bunch of yards and slide. No, no, he was going to go to that end zone. 62 yards on a third down run by the true freshman. Eric Green, our head official, take a look at it as we take a look at it as well. I think he stayed in all the way. That's a touchdown. Good feet work by the freshman quarterback. What an impressive run. Very impressive run. Man. Four sport athlete, football, basketball, baseball, and tennis. For Richard. Named Palm Beach Area Offensive Player of the Year. Passed for 3,200 yards and 29 touchdowns as a senior. And how about this? Gets the job done in the classroom. Okay. Outstanding. Just all around impressive. Made his first college start. Threw for 242 yards of 23 of 49 against Gardner Webb on the few weeks ago. The extra point is up and good. The freshman's long touchdown run. Puts the Eagles on top, 13 to three. 120 to go before the half. 
you mentioned it early earlier Emery besides what he's doing it seems like he's a leader already and how that's tough for a new guy on campus to come in and become a leader and, and I, be, I believe that his players believe in him especially at that position where you have to have everyone buy into what you're selling and, and gain that trust and, they, and to be able to gain that trust as a true freshman is completely impressive I'm more impressed again with everything else that he brings to the table we talked about his academics we've seen him out here on the field show leadership and getting guys in the right spot in that particular run the fact that he was able to pull away from defenders and we know how fast the back seven is for morgan state it's another layer of how impressive he is as a prospect and how about both our quarterbacks tonight deandre harris he also played tennis wow in high school he was a three sports star in football track and field and tennis at Washington, Georgia. So both Harris, the quarterback for Morgan State, and Richard, the quarterback for North Carolina Central, both played tennis. Is there any correlation between quarterbacking and tennis play? The footwork. Think about the lateral quickness and agility you need to, to succeed in tennis. North Carolina Central kicking off to Morgan State with a 13-3 lead. And the stop there. Upset with himself because he thought he could get more yards. Jordan Cofield on the return. If you're Coach Wheatley, just think about where your two turnovers occurred inside the red zone. And that's potential points. And you have an opportunity to score on your opening series, and you get stopped at the one-yard line. So that's three opportunities inside the red zone to score, two of which happened inside the green zone from the 10-yard going in. And North Carolina Central... Two, two times takes the ball away and one time stops you on the one. Austin Parker, the injured eagle on the kickoff. They're dancing here tonight in Baltimore. Home opener for the Bears. The Eagles had their first home game of the season last week and got their first win. Coach Oliver's first victory, a win over Elizabeth City State, 45-7. to The defense was pretty imp impressive in that game as well. The Eagles, they held the visiting Vikings last week, Emory, to 91 total yards. They recorded 14 tackles for a loss with seven sacks, three fumble recoveries, and oh, by the way, they had an interception return for a touchdown. Did you just say 14 TFLs? Yes. My goodness. That was their defensive performance a week ago. See what the Bears can do before the half with 1.15 to go before halftime. Johnson. Gets a couple in the first down carry. will bring up a second and eight. Johnson had the 56-yard run that got him in the red zone, but then those interceptions when they found themselves in the red zone. The completion there to Gervet. That's the only guy that has caught a pass tonight. Out of four catches for Gervet. Harris is four of seven, and all four completions to Xavier Gervet. Harris steps up in the pocket, might want to use his legs. He does. Tries to get to the outside, being chased down and tackled from behind by Foster. The linebacker was able to corral him. I love the thought process right there by DeAndre Harris, realizing, hey, I got to get out of bounds, and made that extra move to try to get to the sideline, but just a great job showing that team speed right there by Jerome Foster, tackling him inside the, the white lines, and that's what keeps that clock rolling. 15 seconds to go here in the first half. Morgan State with the football. First and 10. Harris to throw it. Here comes some pressure. Going to step out of bounds with four seconds to go before the half. So four seconds remain before the half. An entertaining first half here in Baltimore, Maryland. The Eagles with a 13-3 lead over the Bears. And a clean first half, too. We haven't seen many penalties by either team outside of maybe two or three. Just three penalties. Two for Morgan and one for the Eagles so far in this first half. Dr. Edward Scott, the director of athletics, is coming up at the half. Also the new head men's basketball coach at Morgan State. We'll talk to those two men all coming up during our halftime report here on ESPN3. The handoff. Good positive run there by Johnson on the final play of the first half. So the Eagles will fly in the locker room with a 13-3 lead on the road at Baltimore, Maryland. 
here at Morgan State. We have reached one half of football. It's been those turnovers. They lead the nation in turnovers. And how about the freshman, the way he's playing tonight? He's grown up right in front of our eyes. Big run there by Richard. The Eagles fly to the half with a 13-3 lead. You're watching me at football. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? And we're back in Baltimore, Maryland, on the campus at Morgan State University. We're at the half on ESPN3, MEAC College Football, North Carolina Central with a 13-3 lead over the Morgan State Bears. Hi, everybody. Great to see you here at the half. Phil Shaner joined by Dr. Edward Scott, the director of athletics. And what a great year it has been for you, yeah. firstly on the personal level. Congratulations, first baby into the family. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Tia, uh, she's doing great. Three months, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, but a lot, lot less sleep than I'm used to. I'll say <laughs> it that way. First game at home for the crowd tonight at Hughes Stadium. They noticed something different, the track and the turf, $2.5 yeah. million dollar project. Absolutely. It looks great. Tell us about it. Well, thank you. Uh, it's something we needed to do. I think first it was a health and safety issue. We needed to make sure we had the right playing surface for the student athletes, but also to demonstrate the commitment that we're serious about being a, you know, a power in the MEAC and, and really elevating our program. Besides the this project, you hired uh, two new coaches on the men's basketball side. And, of course, tonight, Coach Wheatley yeah. uh, make his home debut. So tell us about that and what that process was like. We'll start with Coach Wheatley. Uh, you know, I know you searched around. Yeah. Five did. coaches in seven years. So yeah. you, you wanted someone that's going to come and, and make an impact. And, and Coach Wheatley hits those three things that you were looking for, right? He, he, he gets uh, it done. I mean, he was a home run hire for us, right? Yes, he's got a name brand. But most importantly about Coach Wheatley is his values, right? I, he knows football. That that was an easy. But I wanted someone that our young men could look up to, right, someone that they could see as a role model and understand that, that football can offer more to life. And I think Coach Wheatley knocked that out of the park for us. We're going to meet the men's basketball coach, the new coach in Morgan State, his hire. Kevin, you got a good guy who yeah. obviously knows this area. Yep. Uh, so you have to be excited about the basketball season. Well, yeah, and it's Brodus and I, Kevin and I, we worked together, you know, before, and we won a championship together. Again, another guy different than Wheatley in style, um, but same in substance right he's about the right things they're both tremendous recruiters and uh, Kevin will clean up this area and I'm really excited to to get into basketball season for him believe it or not final Saturday of September basketball season huh. right around the corner they'll start practicing and uh, oh yeah you'll have both sports and all kinds of sports going on besides football and basketball that we yeah. touched on there's a lot more going on athletically at Morgan State University and uh, get us up to speed on some of the other athletics uh, teams that are playing well yeah our volleyball program had a great come from behind victory last night over uh, UN MES, Maryland mm -hmm. Eastern Shore. They were down two, uh, two games and then uh, rattled off the last three. Uh, so that was huge for us. Cross country is running well right now, so we like where that program is at. Women's basketball at Davis is going to surprise some folks this year. Our softball program has already set records for uh, school wins in the past two years. So I like the infrastructure we have. I really like the portfolio of coaches, and I think our student athletes are poised to do something special this year. It is about winning in athletics, but it's uh, more than that. And I think uh, one thing here at Morgan, you're turning young men and women into special leaders that can do something and give back to their communities Absolutely. when they leave this campus. And that's really what you're looking for for your athletic programs besides measuring them with wins and losses. Well, that's first and foremost. You know, what we didn't talk about before we had the baby a month before that, I earned my doctorate. And uh, we, we stress education. If students don't go to class, they don't do what they need to in the classroom, they don't play here at Morgan. And that really stops at the, starts at the top with Dr. Wilson. I mean, he's been a phenomenal supporter of ours, and we let that carry all the way down through to the student athletes. Dr. Edward Scott, the director of athletics here at Morgan State University. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Phil. Thanks for All coming right. out. And we'll take a listen to the, of course, the wonderful band here at Morgan State, the machine. They just keep rolling on. We'll have more of our halftime show coming up on ESPN3. Magnificent Marching Machine here in Baltimore, Maryland on the campus at Morgan State University. We are at the half with North Carolina Central with a 13-3 lead 
over the Morgan State Bears. And joined now by the new head men's basketball coach, Coach Brodus is with us. And Coach, first of all, welcome to Morgan. And this is your first football experience. So what did you think of the first half and the, the atmosphere at Hughes Stadium? The atmosphere is unbelievable. Um, I got faith in Coach Wheatley. We're going to turn this around the second half. He does a really good job with these young men. And you guys are in for a treat because their time is coming. It's coming. Well, let's talk basketball now. Assistant and coach at Maryland. Spent a lot of time also in Georgetown in the D.C. area. So what are we to expect with the Morgan State men's basketball team now with you in charge? Well, we're going to, I hope to ex, you, for you guys to ex, um, expect is, you know, a high-powered offensive team like we were both at Maryland and Georgetown. You, you're going to see some exciting, you know, play up temple, 94 feet, pressing you from the time you walk into the gym. And these guys, are, they're, they, they're chopping at the bit. They're ready to go. So when you evaluate the talent that you had, uh, what did you think, and, and where do you go personnel-wise uh, for this team this year? Well, we, we have enough to compete right away. That, that's our plan. We, we, we're here to compete and hope the ball bounces the right way. And the, the talent level, you know, is, is on par. We, we, were, we should be. And we got some good players that's, that's returning, and we got some new good ones that just came into the program. What is the process like from here at this point to get ready for the season when you're able to get things going? And really, it's the final Saturday in September, so the season is right around the corner. Right around the corner. That three-hour three practice today, the guys, you know, they probably really wasn't ready for it and didn't know it was coming. But, you know, you have to you have to hone your craft you have to really work at trying to do things the right way and that's what the stage we're in right now trying to get these guys to do things the right way and the way we want them to do coach Brodus joining us here at the halftime the new morgan state men's basketball coach you're very familiar with the beltway area so that has to be a big help for you as far as getting uh, attracting players and a lot of basketball talent in this baltimore to washington dc stretch of area uh, a lot of great basketball players a lot of great players here in the dmv in, in baltimore area um and we we're not going to leave no stone unturned we're going after all of them guys we shouldn't get we're going to go after them, and we, guys, we should, you know, being playful, we're going to go after them as well. So you're going to see Morgan State and here we're a lot of places in the next few weeks, in the next few months, you know, just to see who and what can help our program. We're not chasing a number, a guy that's the top 20 in the area or top five, whatever. We're chasing a fit, you know, that can fit the way we want to play. I'm excited, Coach Bursch is the uh, new head coach of Morgan State men's basketball. Get ready for some Bear basketball. It is right around the corner, but we got more Bear football on the way. We're at the half. North Carolina Central with a 13-3 lead on ESPN3. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. Morgan State with golden opportunities, unable to score from the red zone. A lot of that had to do with the Eagles' defense. And how about this wild play, Emery? Yeah, big-time play right there. Johnny on the spot. Deshaun Stevens nearly got into the end zone. The Eagles, they get into the end zone here. Collar, the touchdown run. The only points on the board was Nicholas O'Shea's 21-yard field goal for Morgan State. That's because in the red zone, Brian Mills kept picking off passes. The defense was outstanding for the Eagles. And how about the freshman quarterback using his legs to go for the touchdown to put the Eagles ahead 13-3, and that's where we are at the half. The second half is coming up on ESPN3. The state of dumbness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? On campus tonight at Hughes Stadium, Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. The czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. And Phil Shaner with you. Pretty good, entertaining first half. North Carolina Central with a 13-3 lead. Coach Wheatley, well, he's happy with the way his defense has played outside of containing that freshman quarterback. And he said offensively, execution. They need to execute and finish drives in the red zone. They turned into turnovers by the Eagles. You talk about finishing drives inside the red zone. Morgan State is one of four inside the red zone and we know two of those were interceptions one was a goal line stop the eagles will get the ball to start the second half the second half is underway the football is free the bears fall on it but i think they're going to say that football was down at the 30 yard line on the return so let's take a look at miak scores 
light day in the MEAC. Only two games this afternoon. A game you were at. Bethune-Cookman with a 37-29 win over Howard. And FAMU in a close one. A 30-28 win over Norfolk State. I tell you, Bethune-Cookman's offense is ridiculously fast. A lot of speed. Take a look at the MEAC standing. Still very early. MEAC opener today. But who do you like out of this group? Who's going to rise at the end of the season? Who's going to be the team to beat? Keep an eye on South Carolina State. That's the team no one wants to play. Already has an upset on the season against Wofford. Was a top 10 team when he beat them. Keep an eye on the Bulldogs. Well, let's keep an eye on them as the MEAC season is officially underway with the MEAC openers here tonight and this afternoon. Of course, there was a game on Thursday night as well. North Carolina A&T with a 37-0 win over Delaware State. The game you watched on ESPNU. Totten with the toss. A good run. I'm impressed by Totten. Third leading rusher in the MEAC, and he was our player to watch at the beginning of this game, and he's having a pretty nice night. 13 carries, 79 yards for Totten. Totten again looking for a penalty, but doesn't get one. It's the 35-yard line. Tackle me right there by Carl Garns, who's one of the better defensive players on this Morgan State football team. Coach told us earlier in the week that he can play corner, safety, linebacker. Anywhere you put him, he's going to thrive. A big-time playmaker for Morgan State. Played at Camden Catholic High School. Seems like Carl Garns has been here for years. <laughs> exactly. Good leadership skills out there on the field as well. Third and five. Richard, the freshman. See how dangerous he is running the football. He's going to run it this time. And cuts back and loses the football, and it's picked up by the Morgan State Bears. An opportunity for them to scoop and score, and that is the case. Touchdown, Malachi Washington. Injured last season, he's back, and he makes the biggest play of his college career there to scoop it and score it. We talked about Morgan State's linebacking core being the best group of that defense, and what a great job by Malachi Washington to be giant on the spot to pick up that football and bring it all the way back for a touchdown. And I was just getting ready to talk about Davius Richard having to understand when to live another play, and he's carrying that football a little bit loose, but just a great job defensively by Morgan State forcing that fumble and Malachi Washington right there to pick it up for the scoop and score. The freshman looked like a freshman on that play. The turnover and Malachi Washington, who missed all of last season with an injury, was all MEAC performer in 2017, ranked third in the league with eight sacks and tied for third in tackles. And he makes this big play, scoops it up and scores it for the first touchdown for Morgan State here tonight. Yeah, he plays their grizzly position, which is essentially their, their rusher in this 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 uh three four defense for morgan state so morgan state's defense gives him the first touchdown the offense was able to come up with a field goal but as far as getting six leave it to the d senior laden second level ian mcburrow rico kennedy malachi washington all seniors on for the extra point is nicholas o'shea who has the field goal tonight extra point is up and good. Things get tighter here. The defense comes up and makes the big play. 13-10 game. Things getting good in Baltimore, Maryland. The MEAC opener. Take a look at this. Malachi Washington. The scoop and the score. Welcome back, Mr. Washington. More reliable in keeping you connected. Washington scooped and scored, but how about the guy who caused the fumble? Yeah, Devin Hebron with the near peanut punch. My old college teammate, Charles Tillman, the manufacturer of that peanut punch, punched it loose. His fellow linebacker, Malachi Washington, scooped and scored. Big play right there for Morgan State. Their defense getting them on the board. There's a look at Washington. Great to have him back from injury. Missed all of last season after that super year in 2017. Eagles will have the football back. On the return. Let's see what the freshman can do after coughing it up. See if he can rebound after his wonderful first half. And there's a penalty marker down. Only the fourth penalty of the game. 
And that was something that both these teams wanted to focus on, cleaning up the penalties. Discipline, they said. We've got to have good discipline. So Washington with the touchdown ran it in 35 yards out for the score. Now 13-10 game. This is a great MEAC opener tonight on ESPN3. Very entertaining. Coach Wheatley trying to get his first win. His head coach at Morgan State. Good, tough run by Totten, but was kind of struck out by that Morgan State defense. And does a play like that energize the defense a little bit when you when you come up and and score for your team? Absolutely, it gets you wanting to go back out there and make another play. And that was a prime example of that by Michael Zelenik, the defensive lineman, getting off that block and, and making the initial contact and allowing his guys to rally up and make the stop. So you're right. Once you make a play on defense, it's contagious. Totten got two, second and eight. Richard. What a catch. Wow. With the first down grab by Stevens. Wasn't sure if he came up with that one, but... That's his second catch of the game. You like how Richard isn't afraid to make tight window throws to the covered guy. That was really, I mean, Small was all over Richard, and he was still, or Stevens, I should say, and still made the uh, the catch. Totten with the carry. I think they got something special there in, in Stevens, the redshirt junior who transferred in from NC State. Then they also have Ryan McDaniel, who we didn't see much of tonight, number 15. He's a transfer from Tulsa. So a lot of a lot more players are transferring more than ever in college football and the landscape of college football. Morgan State's defense getting into the backfield and getting to Totten. See Rico Kennedy. There he is. We talked about him in the open. He's a family man expecting his second child in December. Watch the acting job right here by Richard. Try to get the, he tried to draw the person to foul. It's an NBA level flop right there by Richard. <laughs> Rico Kennedy, what a job he does. He has a child at home that's six years old, and his wife. They're expecting their second child in December. Uh, he would he would love to have an opportunity to play at the next level. Could he? You think? I think so. When you look at how the game has changed, we'll get into that in a minute after this play. But he definitely has an opportunity. Third and six. Richard stands up with the pocket. Oh, in and out of the hands of E.J. Hicks, who's been targeted a few times tonight by Richard. And just to go back to that point about Rico Kennedy, because the game has gotten faster, and Coach Wheatley talked about that, that's why you don't see the enormous backs that you've seen during his day. Uh, guys are getting a little bit thinner, and so when you have thinner guys on offense that can run, you need thinner guys on, off, on defense that can run and go tackle those guys. And Kennedy, Washington, McBorough, all of those guys fit the bill, so absolutely he has an opportunity. He would love that for his family. White back to receive the punt. White catches it and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 11.04 to go in the third quarter, and North Carolina Central holding a 13-10 lead. Take a look at Totten. Flopping, looking for the call. That was the that was Richard, the freshman quarter. Don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Back at Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, on the campus of Morgan State University. North Carolina Central with a 13-10 lead over the Bears. Miak football on ESPN3. Harris. Quick hitter. Gets it to White. Right across the 45-yard line. Eagles defense has been great. Brian Mills, two interceptions. Mills, a transfer of the College of Canyons. He's from California. He has those two interceptions now. Nine interceptions on the season. They lead the country, as we mentioned before, with 15 takeaways. There's Gravette, who has three catches tonight, trying to roll out those cramps. He has four catches for 42 yards. They could use him. 
He's probably on the side telling coach, man, why don't you throw it to Baylor? Yeah. You gave me too much work early on. <laughs> there was the run by Joshua Chase with that 41-yard explosive run in the first half. And he was tackled by Foster. Foster leading the way with eight tackles on the night, number 44. You don't see Jerome Central. Foster has been great tonight. You don't see Central players stay blocked for long. Third and two for the Bears on third downs, three of seven tonight. Get the completion. Spins off a tackle. Still on his feet is Joshua Chase. Big play there, Chase, to get the first down, and they need to be better on third downs. And that was a, a nice play there by the Bears to move the chains. Yeah, coming out of half, there were three out of seven in the first half on third down, but great effort right here. That's one thing you can't coach is effort, and Chase did a great job breaking two tackles and getting that first down. Chase gets another carry and a first down carry. Falls forward for a pickup of three or four yards. Looks like Morgan State wants to pick up the pace a little bit. Down 13-10. Yeah, here's that previous play, or that's the play we just watched. And again, just falling forward has been the story for these Morgan State backs. Whoever is in the backfield is going to fall forward. They've done a great job in that effort. Second and six, Harris throws an incomplete. And guess who he tried to throw the football to? Bailey for the first time. And I think there's going to be a pass interference call. The first target at number 13, Manassas Bailey. At 9.06 in the third quarter. Wow. Menashe finally gets targeted. And he was draped yeah. over his back, <laughs> riding him like an extra jersey. Wow. All over him was Manny Smith, the sophomore, the one on coverage. And Manny Smith called for the pass interference the first time they targeted Bailey, the leading yards receiver in the MEAC this year. There's an injured player down on the field with 9.06 to go in the third quarter. And a 13-10 Eagles lead over the Bears. He popped right back up and, and ran off. So you know that, you know, Coach Oliver and the Eagles game plan to stop number 13, Bailey. So they've obviously done a pretty good job because that was the first target, the first time they've thrown him the football. There's a look at Coach Oliver, and he's a defensive guy, former defensive guy at North Carolina Central. So what, what, what do they have done tonight to take Bailey out of the game? Well, they just put him in, in press coverage, and they also did a great job in, in bracketing him. So... It takes two to tango, three to jump rope. So when you're having a guy like that struggle to find his way to get open, you want to move him around. That's what you started to see now from Morgan State's offensive staff, which is why he got the target. Snap over the head of Harris, and he is taken down in the backfield in a hurry by Darius Royster. Royster's seventh tackle of the night. Royster and Foster have been great tonight for the Eagles defensively. And that's on the quarterback. You have to get a handle on that football. It hit both your hands. Yes, it was a little high, but that's why you're on scholarship. They got they got you there to make those plays to supersede any errors that, that go on. You don't want another turnover here if you're Morgan State, but this defense for North Carolina Central can now pin their ears back and truly get aggressive in getting after the quarterback. Second down now for the Bears. Harris steps away from the line and will take it from the shotgun. See if they can get the ball back to Bailey. The catch is made by Robinson. Short of the first down, just a short completion there. The Eagles giving them that completion. That's it. Robinson with the grab, but nothing after catch. Yeah, if he catches it the first time, just a good hit right there on the quarterback. If he catches the ball the first time, he bobbled it a little bit. He had room to run and turn the corner, but just a great open field tackle once again by North Carolina Central. So here we go. Third downs have been terrible for the Bears this season. Four of eight on third down. And a third and long. Third and 17. Harris is just going to run the football straight ahead. Gets up across the 40-yard line. And a fourth down coming up for Morgan State. I think they're going to go for it. They're signaling to go for it. Keep that offense out there. They were hoping to get, get at least half to make it more fourth than manageable, but they're going to go for it here fourth and all. 0 for 1 on fourth downs tonight for the Morgan State Bears. Harris. Here comes the pressure. Sacked. Brought down in the backfield. And the sack by Steven Stokers. Stokers, the senior, gets him. Stokes makes the sack. Boy, coming quickly from the backside. 
That was a busted play right there. Running back was on the wrong side. That was supposed to be the running back's guy. You saw Harris fake that way. There was no running back, which allowed Steven Stokes to, to fly off the, the corner. The Baltimore, Maryland native, the senior, and get the sack. Stokes came into this game with a Miak high, two interceptions. Well, that was matched by Brian Mills. Stokes came into the game, 21 tackles, one and a half for a loss, and he gets his first sack of the season for Stokes to go along with his two interceptions so far this season defensively. So the Bears turn it over on downs. Let's see what the Eagles can do. With the ball, Jordan Freeman, a new set of legs to replace Isaiah Toten, give him a little break. Freeman has had some nice runs tonight when he's gotten his opportunity. That was a nice one right there, just slicing through that defense. They have a type there at North Carolina Central. These guys are built the same way, have a lot of the same skill set, which is why they're so interchangeable in their offense. You can put any one of these guys in the backfield and they'll be successful. Second and three. Eagles working in Bears territory. And the give again off to the fresh legs of Freeman, who has the first down down to the 40 yard line. Just impressive piece of running right there by Freeman. Good blocking downfield by the receivers. Little face mask right there, but not going to call that. But just a great job in, in establishing this running game for the Eagles. Freeman goes for eight yards, first and 10 from the 39. The Eagles up by three, moving the football. Well-designed play there. Richard, the quarterback, fakes the handoff inside and goes outside. We saw him run for that long touchdown of 62 yards. He didn't break it for 62, but a little misdirection and nice play. Yeah, had him wide open. You wonder if the last fumble got him a little bit more conservative as far as his effort because he had an opportunity to make that guy miss, but he just did a great job of protecting the football, taking the yards that were, that were out there to be had, and made the most of it, but most importantly, he didn't fumble, and I think that's still conscious in his mind of that last play he tried to run. Richard only got three, so a second and seven. Completion made, the 28-yard line, and the catch by Xavier McCoy, McCoy's fourth reception of the season from Charlotte, North Carolina. Love the confidence you're seeing from your true freshman quarterback. Davius Richard, I, I mean, the confidence in which he's throwing the football, the decisiveness, he's going to be a really good player for a long time in his conference. Richard, hand off to Freeman. Freeman moves the pile. Great first down run. It's close to the 20. Stopped at the 21-yard line. 4.35 to go, third quarter. The Eagles up by three, looking to add to their lead tonight on the road in Baltimore. You're starting to see this offensive line of North Carolina Central just slowly wear down this defense in front of Morgan State. They've been doing a great job of just keeping these guys out of the backfield and moving them off the spot. See that offensive line led by Andrew Dale, the preseason all MEAC second teamer for the Eagles. Give to Collar, who has the touchdown run. New fresh legs, takes the ball down close to the 10-yard line. Stopped at the 11. That moves the chains. Another first down for the Eagles. Mookie Collar. More that short yardage back. Collar again on the outside. Well played there. Rico Kennedy was one of the guys to make the stop, and there's a penalty marker down. We'll have to wait to see. What Eric Green tells us. Too many men on the field. Morgan State was late getting off. So good news, bad news. That's only their third penalty of the night. But these are the kind of discipline mistakes that uh, will drive Coach Wheatley crazy. And this when you're allowing mental mistakes to become physical ones. Guys are tired. Guys are cramping up. They're getting driven down the field by the running game. So stuff like that will happen. It's hard to stay mentally tough in a game like this. Second and five. Collar. Not much. What do you do as a player? Humid night. Two teams battling it out. How do, how do you stay mentally tough? How do you physically keep your mind in the football game. You got to draw back to experiences, which is the summer workouts. You're, you're working on this high heat and this high humidity 
draw back from that experience say hey we we've been through this we can fight through this and and find find it deep within our our playing ability to make a stop because you've gone through worse over the summer doing your workouts second and five on the six richard the freshman is going to tuck it and run and his second rushing touchdown of the night for the freshman making his third varsity start college football his third college football start richards in for the score just that was too easy, right? Way too easy. That lane opened up, and you saw right there, once he got to the seven-yard line, he knew he was going to walk in. Just a great job by that offensive line this entire drive. you got to give those guys credit because the running game was working. They were swapping out backs, and everyone had success, but the offensive line was the main constant on that entire drive. The extra point is up and good. Richard, 6 of 14 passes for 62 yards, but his legs is the things that making it happen. He had that long 62-yard touchdown run. This one's a little shorter, but it still counts for six. And the Eagles ahead of the Bears. Be limp-worthy. Goodyear. More driven. They call them the magnificent marching machine. Morgan State University's band. Award-winning and fun, and they can get down. Getting down tonight in Baltimore, Maryland. But their Bears are down 20 to 10. Because of the legs of Richard, the freshman quarterback, just scored from six yards out. It was a nine-play, 54-yard drive, took 3.30 off the clock. So the Bears with the football back, and they have some work to do on offense. The return by Cofield. Let's see what DeAndre Harris, the senior quarterback, can do leading this team. The offense doesn't have the touchdown tonight. It was the defense, the Washington scoop and score. The offense was in the red zone twice, but turned into interceptions, both by Brian Mills. So they had opportunities, were not able to cash in in the red zone. Of course, there was a field goal by Nicholas O'Shea, and that's the scoring for Morgan State. Central, those two touchdowns by their quarterback. Another short touchdown run for the Eagles tonight. Again, this defense is, I'm impressed. Very impressed by the Eagles defense. They get after it. That's Miles Thurman. He's a six foot, 280 pound junior. He's been beating that guard across his face all night long, which is why he's throwing off the, the assignment of the zone blocks by that offensive line because he's beating them to the spot and getting inside that backfield, causing that quick penetration. Second and 10 for Harris. Harris keeps it himself, and he is sacked by Darius Royster. Tackle number eight by Royster. He's been big from that defensive end position. I was just about to say, we've been calling his name all night long. Eight tackles, like you mentioned. He went unaccosted, didn't take the cheese on the zone read. Made a beeline to the quarterback and brought him down for a sack. There's a timeout on the field. Morgan State takes the timeout with 2.13 to go here in the third quarter. And, of course, the dreaded down coming up for Morgan State. They want to try to get things going. They've struggled on third downs. The offense, really the only bright spot. How about last week, their loss to Army, 52-21. But there was a time in that game where they had the early 14-7 lead up in West Point, which was encouraging. And Coach Wheatley said, hey, well, I'm not part of moral wins or anything like that, but that was at least something to, to build on that they were able to go to Army and, you know, have that 14-7 lead at one point, then it ended up 52-21, but Bailey had that big week last week, six catches, 121 yards and two touchdowns, but tonight, not a catch. Remember, just one target to Bailey and the pass interference call. So a third and 16. Four of nine on third downs for the Bears. Low snap, Harris has it. Gets it to Chase. Chase still on his feet, makes a man miss across the 20-yard line and down to the 21. So the Bears will have to punt the football back to North Carolina Central. Just a great job right there by Central. Just team defense. One, two, three, four, five Eagles around the football. No chance for Chase to make a play, but just great job defensively 
by Central getting off the field. North Carolina Central finished last season with an overall record of five and six. They were three and four in the MEAC. They capped off the season with a 21-7 win over South Carolina State, a team you mentioned is going to be dangerous this year, you feel, in the MEAC. North Carolina Central looking to rebound from its first losing season since 2013. So they're used to winning. Remember last year. All star. He did a couple of South Carolina State games. We saw them upset Howard. And we saw them play tough against Morgan State because of how well they are defensively. They were a young football team, and now all of those guys are experienced. Both Tyrese Nick, the quarterback, is experienced now. He was a freshman last year. They're going to be a real problem for many teams moving forward. Fourth penalty for Morgan State on that punt. Fair catch called for. And North Carolina Central will have the football back. Let's take a look who Morgan State has to go the rest of the season. You saw that loss last week to Army, 52-21. And next week, they're at Bethune-Cookman. And then they'll be home for Delaware State at South Carolina State. FAMU here in Baltimore at Norfolk State. North Carolina A&T State, they come here to Baltimore. And then Virginia University of Lynchburg and outside of the MEAC game. And then they finish the season down the road at Washington, D.C. at Howard. That is the schedule for the Morgan State Bears and Coach Wheatley. Doesn't get any easier for the Bears with that schedule. But they still have a shot if they're able to get some momentum and, and pull out this game because I think this MEAC will, this MEAC standings will go down to the wire like we saw last year. It's a crazy year in the MEAC. Richard, six carries, 68 yards. And a couple of loss plays for a loss, but as far as net yards, 68 for him. Totten with the carry there and the stop made rather quickly by Chesley. Chesley, he surprised a lot of people. I don't think they saw the, the kind of player that Cam Chesley is. He's a great player, and he's, he's going to be a, he's going to be a factor for the next couple of years here for Morgan State. Second and 13. Yeah, Chesley using that 6'4 frame, that length, to chase down the backside run. He's done that a lot tonight, so a great job by him playing the defensive end position. Chesley now with seven tackles on the night. Going deep down the field and over the head of his intended receiver. Looking there for Campbell, Barry Campbell. Tight spiral, though. <laughs> Beautiful spiral. That's the one area of his game we haven't really seen a lot of tonight because there was no need to. The deep passing game, we've seen him throw short, intermediate. We've seen the running ability of Davius uh, Richard. But we haven't seen the deep pass yet, and I think that's an area where he's going to try to continue to grow, maybe in his game, but also down the line because he, to me, seems like he has everything that you want in the quarterback position. Richard, 6 of 15 for 62 yards, has been sacked once. Third and 13 for Richard. Out of the pocket, looking downfield. It wasn't a spiral that time. More like a wobbler coming out looking for Ryan McDaniel and incomplete. So the Bears defense did what they had to do, getting pressure on the freshman. But well, this was speed comes into play. You see right there, Ian McBurrow accelerating to the quarterback to knock it down, to knock him down and make that a tougher throw. But you didn't see any receiver work back to try to help Richard on that play. So he was waiting for somebody to try to work back, and by the time the receiver did, it was too late. McBurrow with six tackles tonight. We didn't talk much about him, but he's uh, named the Campbell Trophy semifinalist in the middle. They really trust McBurrow, and he does a great job in the classroom as well. 3.5 GPA. Credits the play and the toughness and to get here. He's one of those guys that McBurrow's always here at 6 a.m. Even in the summertime, he's one of the first guys here, and he credits that to his mother who raised him and his three siblings. So four kids, a single mother, got the job done. And Ian McBurrow, he's a special linebacker. He would also like to play at the next level. Came into this game with 29 tackles, including one and a half tackles for a loss. He was outstanding last year and has 171 career tackles here at his time at Morgan State. 
with man in the middle. That discipline to get up here and get here every day at 6 a.m. is the type of discipline you need to be successful in the classroom, and that's why he's a semifinalist, like you mentioned, for the academic Heisman Trophy, which is the Campbell Trophy. Ransom takes the punt down the sidelines and out of bounds with just six seconds to go here in the third quarter, and the Eagles with a 20-10 lead over the Bears. Should, should be an entertaining fourth quarter. Morgan State has some work to do to get back in it. I've attended the Campbell Trophy ceremony, and I'm always amazed at not only the GPAs of these guys, but the majors of these guys, and the, knowing what it takes to, to be a college athlete and to put in that work in the classroom, just to be there at the ceremony is already an accomplishment in it of itself, more so than actually winning the award. Penalty marker flies before the ball is put in play. Wow, how do you have a legal substitution? That's what Coach Wheatley, look at that face. <laughs> look at that face. I don't have to say anything about what he thinks about that penalty. He's saying the same thing. He's thinking what I'm saying. How do you have an legal substitution when you're just getting the football back after a punt? How does that happen? Coach is upset, man. <laughs> oh, boy. If you see that face, I'd turn around and go the other way. Harris is sacked in the backfield. Again, this Eagles defense has just been tough tonight. They've been flying all over the field. They lead the country in turnovers. They had two more here tonight. And then another sack coming up to make the big play in the sack. And that's the end of the first quarter. The Eagles doing it on defense. We're headed to the fourth quarter. The MEAC opener from Baltimore. The Eagles with a 2010 lead over Morgan State on ESPN3. More driven. We reach the fourth quarter in Baltimore, Maryland at Hughes Stadium. NC Central with a 2010 lead over the Morgan State Bears. Second and long for Harris and his Bears. Almost a one-handed catch. The quick release, and Robinson had his hand on it, but couldn't come down with the catch. Closes in an incompletion. He also had Jordan Cofield open right there on a hook route. I thought that's where he was going with the football, but he wanted to hit that skinny post. Just missed the outstretched hands of, of Robinson on that play. But there were some options there to try to pick up a chunk play for this offense. They desperately need one. Well, you're not going to improve your third downs when you have a third and 21. They're four of 10 tonight on third downs. Harris floats the ball towards the sideline and incomplete was looking for Joshua Chase out of the backfield. So Morgan State has 262 yards of total offense on 48 plays. North Carolina Central has run 51 plays for 273 yards. So that's pretty even. And it just basically comes down to those two big interceptions that were down in the red. Muffed handled pun in any way. I should say the way it was handled. And the Eagles believe they still have it. A penalty marker comes down. That's going to be pulling someone off the pile. And it's going to stay Eagles football. But just to finish up that point, you had the two turnovers. You got one back in which you scored. But you also had the big stop in the beginning of the game. You came away with no points on the one-yard line. That yeah, was three trips. Yep, stopped, turned it over on downs, and then the two interceptions. So three times where you were really close to scoring. I mean, red zone is one thing, but when you talk about being right there and unable to score. We'll see what Eric Green and his crew come up with here. The Eagles were, were fortunate enough to hold on to that punt after it was mishandled. Number 24, receiving team. 15 yard Ian Barnes called for the unsportsmanlike conduct. Get a look at Morgan State. Trying to coach him up there on the sidelines. 
trying to get things going. They need to get some points. There you see the punt, Emery. In and out of the hands, and very fortunate that he was able to come up with that. But you do love the effort right there by that special teams unit. Make him work for it. Just looked up the field just a second too early, right? Didn't, that's, that's, didn't have it in his hands. It's always tough when you're a punt returner, man, because you got to watch the ball and also watch guys running full speed to tear your head off. And a true freshman quarterback on the road with a 10-point lead here in the fourth quarter. And that's the football on the outside. And skips out of bounds on a two-yard gain. Richard with two rushing touchdowns tonight. One was spectacular for 62 yards. The other one was a little shorter. But he's been pretty good. Six of 16 passes only for 62 yards, but you have to play his legs because he has the ability to run. Well, that's why you can't trust statistics by themselves because if you look at his passing numbers, you think he'd struggle. But he's been playing the quarterback position really well. There were some drops in there, but the decisions were where you wanted them to be. Uh, the decisiveness is where you wanted it to be. Him running is also a great asset like you talked about. So he's been playing a great game. First down run right there by Jordan Freeman. Freeman, good second effort to get the first down. And a move to change for the Eagles. They want to run as much clock as they can. Get on the bus and head back to Durham, North Carolina with their second straight win. Love these tailbacks of North Carolina Central. Interchangeable guys, but guys that always run forward behind their pads. Great instincts, good weaving in between the traffic, in between the trash, and just doing a good job in just running the football overall. First and 10 for the 37 for the Eagles. Freeman straight ahead, big hole. Freeman across midfield makes a man miss, and all the way down to the 42 yard line in the Bear territory. Jordan Freeman. But well, this is the byproduct of your defense not having enough time on the side to get rest. Right now, that offensive line of North Carolina Central is doing a great job of just plowing these guys off the line of scrimmage. It's looking like a practice drill where they hit the sled and move the sled down the field. That's what you're seeing right now up front. Goes for 21 yards. Mookie Collar in the game now, and Collar gets the carry. And he is tackled in the backfield by Rico Kennedy, a TFL for Rico. Yeah, he came right around the corner, untouched, and, and made that stop. That's a great open field tackle. Just good anticipation right there by Kennedy and creating a, a loss of one on that play, putting them in the second and, and long situation. So Totten has 92 yards rushing. Freeman has 72 yards rushing. And the quarterback, Richard, has 70 yards rushing for a total of 245 on the ground. So 245 yards of the 307 of total offense for North Carolina Central and a 10-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Mookie Collar, very patient, fires his way through the hole. Running towards the end zone, Mookie Collar, touchdown! They're wearing down the Morgan State defensive line, and Mookie Collar goes in for the score. We, talk, we, talk, we just talked about how interchangeable these guys are, but I love the vision. You're going to see right here following his offensive lineman, cutting back against the grain right there. Make that cut and go back against Pursuit and outrun everyone to the end zone. Just an outstanding job by Collier. Fantastic run game North Carolina Central has here in great depth at the tailback position. Mookie's second touchdown of the night. Good block there by Ryan McDaniel, one of the wide receivers, to help him get into the end zone. And the Eagles taking control here in the fourth quarter. Up 27 to 10 with 11.59 to go in the fourth. Collier goes for 43 yards for the touchdown. His second one tonight. So it's a couple Collier touchdowns, a couple Richard touchdowns. The Eagles doing it on the ground in Baltimore. Be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. North Carolina Central Eagles starting to fly away from the Bears here at Baltimore, Maryland at Hughes Stadium. 27-10. DJ Galat getting warmed up on the sideline. Looks like we'll have a quarterback change. Latrell Mookie Collar, two rushing touchdowns tonight. The last one, 43-yard touchdown run, a five-play, 77-yard drive. Took 241 out, and you can thank the offensive line for that, making it happen. That's a group that's excited and happy about their performance tonight. 
Absolutely. Let's see what Morgan State can do. They, you know, maybe not for this game, but for the rest of the season, they want to show that their offense can get things going. How about North Carolina Central? They came into this game tonight with just seven touchdowns scored. Four of them were passing, only two rushing touchdowns. So only two rushing touchdowns coming in tonight. Tonight they have five rushing touchdowns, two from Collier and three from Richard. Rededicating themselves to the ground game has been the key in this one. You see it uh, constantly when they have the football. That offensive line is, is having a fun time out there in running the football, just going straight downhill. Winning the line of scrimmage is what the Eagles have done tonight. It's a heck of a job right there. Harris stays in the game even though DJ was warming up. Harris gets to the outside and gets enough for a first down to move the chains. He opened up his try right there and beat the defender to the corner and was able to get just enough to get that first down. Dante Fair knocked him out of bounds. Fair is one of the leaders on the defensive side. It is outstanding Eagles defense. Harris away from one tackle but not the second one and he was trying to go outside to Gravett but Central took it away it was supposed to be a quick pass to Gravett he didn't like what he's seen and just ate the football positive play the fact that he didn't turn the ball over Gravett four catches 42 yards Bailey no catches tonight only one target towards him there was a pass interference call one of the top wide receivers in the MEAC. Shut down tonight. Harris gets the completion to Bailey. He must have heard me talk. <laughs> They're watching the broadcast too, and that looks like he's going to be roughing the, the quarterback right there. Penalty marker down. You see it there, top of your screen, and you see Harris getting up and limping off after the first completion of the night here in the fourth quarter to Bailey. Bailey's 12th catch of the season. Personal foul. Roughing the pass. Number 44. Defense. No hit on the quarterback. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, when you said low hit on the quarterback and we showed the replay, you saw it right there. He kind of grimaced when you saw the hit. Uh, but just a good job. Nice safe play to get your receiver involved. First play for Benashe Bailey uh, that we've seen the reception in the passing game. D.J. Gallant in at quarterback now. Hits Bailey. Back-to-back -back completions to Bailey. And this is what I thought they were going to do earlier in the game when you want to give a guy or get a guy into rhythm. You want to have these nice short stop routes. Just a quick pop pass for your receiver. Getting him in rhythm, making him a part of the offense is just a shame that it has come with 10 minutes left in the, in the game. But that's what you want to do for your, your receiver, your star receiver in the passing game. 10 minutes to go in the game. Galat in at quarterback. Galat will use his legs. Penalty marker in the backfield. And there's a helmet off. That's happened twice tonight. By the same player. Royster was the player who made the hit. He's been everywhere. Here's a look at Galat's run. Yeah, 77 right there loses his helmet. The second time tonight as Bruce Trigg, the offensive lineman, the redshirt junior. So the sixth penalty of the night for North Carolina Central. That helps out the Bears and getting them closer to the red zone. It's a great way to help them get back into this ball game. They need to pick up the pace down 27-10 here in the fourth quarter. Coach Oliver looking for his second career win as the head coach at the place where he went to school. Played at North Carolina Central. Joshua Chase across the 20-yard line and down to the 18. Morgan State has had their success running the football themselves. They just got away from it because of the turnovers. Chase. Running the football tonight for the Morgan State Bears. DJ Galat hits Bailey. Touchdown. Mr. Bailey, where you been? 
And you can see why the pro scouts love when he brings the table. He, that was a catch and explosion to the end zone. A nice little slant pattern. Good job by Galat finding him on the middle of the field. He's good to get to the end zone. Only one target the entire game, and then this drive, three catches, and then this touchdown by Bailey. That last part was straight effort by Bailey. Great job right there, just catching the football, running through an arm tackle, and not going down, using his athleticism to dive for six. Just a great job by Minashe Bailey. Minashe with his fourth touchdown of the season. Leads the MIAC in receiving yards. Had two touchdowns last week against Army. He has five 100-yard receiving days in his career. He's ninth all-time in receiving yards, over 1,300 yards and 72 catches. And there he is. He was quiet all night. Didn't complain. You see, the, you didn't see him out there moping and calling for the football. He played well without the ball which is exactly what you want to see your star receiver do, be a great teammate, and you'll get rewarded eventually. Third straight game with a touchdown. One thing about Bailey, his sophomore season, Emery, he had 37 catches, 610 yards, and six touchdowns. Last year, production was down. He only had 24 catches for 425 yards and four touchdowns. But getting back to your point, doesn't matter. Kid's going to work hard. He's going to do whatever it is what he can to win. And the first offensive touchdown of the night for Morgan State. Very fitting to their top wide receiver who's been quiet tonight, Bailey. As this play is under review, the 18-yard touchdown from D.J. Galat to Minashe Bailey. Minashe Bailey, he would be a, he's also another guy that would love an opportunity to play at the next level. And NFL scouts are kind of circling around after the game against Army. They want to see what this kid is all about. Last year, Joshua Miles drafted, first bear to be drafted in the NFL since 2003, seventh round pick by the Arizona Cardinals. And here's the decision on the review. So it goes as a touchdown. Getting back to that. So Joshua Miles last year, first bear to be drafted in the NFL since 2003. That really sends a message to a lot of these players that maybe they do have an opportunity. And then you bring in Wheatley, who coached in the NFL the last couple of years, played in the NFL. A great opportunity. And I think a lot of these Bears realize that. They, they kind of hang around coach's office and trying to soak up information of how they can get ready to have an opportunity to hopefully play on Sundays. Yeah, because if you're not, you're doing yourself a disservice. And, and why wouldn't you? And it goes to show you, man, if you play well, it doesn't matter where you go. You don't have to go to Florida State. You don't have to go to Fresno State. You can come to Morgan State or North Carolina Central and get yourself drafted. Point after is good. Bailey puts the Bears on the board, but it's still a 10-point lead for North Carolina Central. It's MEAC football. More driven. Back in Baltimore, Maryland, where have you been, Manashes Bailey? Well, found himself in the end zone. Let's look at DeAndre Harris. Seven play, 70 yard drive, two minutes and 44 seconds off the clock. Bailey, 18 yard touchdown catch from DJ Galat. Three catches on that drive. Didn't catch the ball an entire night. It's a 10 point game. The Bears will kick it away to the Eagles. Fair catch called for at the nine yard line. And that's where the Eagles will have the football. Bailey, three catches. 23 yards and a touchdown on that drive. North Carolina Central. The Eagles hoping to hold on, see if they can get their second straight win. A road victory. They're road warriors. And this is a young football team in North Carolina Central. A lot of juniors on that offense. Not too many seniors on the defensive side of the ball, so it's a team like I said, with South Carolina State, that could be a problem next year because of the youth, the experience that they're gaining this year, and next year it just sets the table for them being a, a, a strong team in the conference. North Carolina Central picked to finish fifth at the beginning of this MEAC season. Morgan State was picked to finish eighth in the nine-team MEAC. There's a penalty when the Eagles jumped early. Be the seventh penalty of the night. Seven for the Eagles and five for the Bears here tonight. 
with Jeff Tech. North, North Carolina Central will be at FAMU next week, and then they're finally home. They'll be home for back-to-back -back weeks against Bethune-Cookman and Delaware State, and then they travel to Washington, D.C. on the 2nd of November at Howard. Homecoming against Norfolk State, and then South Carolina State, and then they finish with North Carolina A&T in Greensboro, North Carolina. So that is the remaining schedule for the Eagles. That Aggie Eagle rivalry is one of the best ones in college football. Yeah, I would say that's a big one. Totten with the run, and the penalty marker comes down. The Eagles will be in no hurry. They want to run as much clock as they can with 9.02 left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Eric Green, our referee. That was on Andrew Dale, the preseason all MEAC second teamer, the redshirt junior, 6'2, 285. Rare holding call, maybe the first one on that offensive line we've seen all night. First and 25, ball back on the 15 now. Totten. Breaks one tackle, gets forward. They have a nice punch here with Totten and Freeman, and then the short yardage stuff of Collier, and Collier's the one that has the two touchdowns runs out of that running back position tonight for the Eagles. Totten does a great job of making moves while consistently going downfield. Normally guys try to make a move and stay in one spot, but he's making moves while moving downfield, which is impressive uh, to, to do. Uh, one of the impressive things about his game that, that I like watching him on film prior to this ball game watching him out here tonight just doing a lot of a lot of great things at the position second down for the eagles totten closing in on a hundred yards rushing tonight the pass what a great catch threw a rocket and a great grab there by xavier mccoy mccoy's fifth catch of the season second catch of the night this was thrown on a frozen rope by your freshman uh, quarterback to the receiver down the field over the defender, the athletic defender, and making an athletic catch. Good thing McCoy's 6'3", Emery, or I don't think he would have grabbed that <laughs> because he, he he left his feet. We had the Morgan State men's basketball coach here at the half. He might, you know, he, he would have liked that. That was an impressive leap by McCoy, 6'3", to go up there and get that one and a first down for the Eagles. It was 7.30 to go in the game. Totten is brought down. McBurrow was in there, and a host of Carl Garns was in there. Host of Bears getting nasty on Totten, who's trying to get 100 yards on the night. as 21 carries, just a couple of yards shy of 100. I like Carl Garns as a defender, man. When, when there's always a fracas on the field. Yeah, he's nasty, right? He, he's nasty. He's I mean, involved. It, we've done we've done quite a few Morgan <laughs> games over the years, and you'd always give me the warning. Watch out. Watch number two. Watch, Watch number, number two. two do something here. Always into something, but in a positive <laughs> way because you need leaders like that on your defense. Saying he's always got his hand in the cookie jar? Always. Totten breaks a tackle. Good run by Totten. Very close to a first down. It'll be a yard short, but he's in bear territory, and that run will get him over 100 on the night on his 22nd carry. Watch him right here. Just keeping his feet moving, man, and, that, and this is going to allow you to break tackles. He already has a natural low center of gravity because he's 5'10", but when he gets even lower and, and tunnels through those arm tackles, he's able to fight through and pick up extra yards. Third and short, 6 of 12 on third downs tonight for the Eagles and Jordan Freeman gets the carry and Rico Kennedy in there to make the stop. There's no quit in Rico Kennedy right there beating the block, getting through there and making the stop in the backfield to force a fourth down. Kennedy now six tackles. How about three tackles for a loss on the night, Emery? For Rico Kennedy, three TFLs. Defensive leader, man, and that's what you want to see, guys that are not giving up. There's no quit in him, all fight. And you like that because it keeps you in the ball game. Still a lot of time left to try to come back if you're Morgan State. Eagles will punt the football away. The fair catch inside the 10-yard line. And let's see if Morgan State can 
keep it going offensively. They found Nashe Bailey for three receptions, and he took him into the end zone for the first offensive touchdown of the night. So Morgan State, they've, they've scored now six touchdowns on the season, Emory. They have only one rushing touchdown and four passing touchdowns. Now you add a defensive touchdown. So they haven't scored a whole lot this season. And that's what's frustrating because when you talk about offensive football for Morgan State, you speak with their offensive coordinator, Travis Manger, who's one of the best offensive minds in the football. It's frustrating for him because he has players. They just have to get the job done and execute. Galat loses the football. It's on the turf. It looks like it was recovered by Joshua Chase. So it'll stay Morgan State ball. The Eagles were very close to having their 16th takeaway of the season, which leads the country. They have two interceptions tonight, both of them by Brian Mills. That probably should have been an incomplete pass. That's tuck rule-ish, right? Yeah. He tried to pull that ball back, but it came out of his hands. That should have been an incomplete pass. There's a whistle before the play. You go back to uh, talking about the offensive coordinator. He's been here through a lot of the coaches, right? He's been retained through a number of the coaches that have been here. He said when he's had three or four coaches in the last five years, and he, he's one of the coaches that has remained, and he's coached just about every position and then finds himself as the offensive coordinator for Coach Wheatley. But that tells you the type of coach he is. If he's been retained by all those staffs, they see something special in him. And the fact that he's coached a lot of these positions, he knows these players really well and knows how to get them in position to be successful. So we're under a review with 452. So what are they looking for here in the review? You kind of touched on it already, but what do you see there, Emery? To see if he was trying to pull that ball back in and it fell out of his hands because that right there would let you know that it's an incomplete pass. I think that's an incomplete pass, not a fumble, because a fumble would be something that if he was able to pull it back and then let it go, that's a fumble. But that was still in the motion of trying to pump fake and pull it back. To me, that's an incomplete pass. Eric Green with the headset on, talking to the replay booth, which is located below us. We're on the top of Hughes Stadium's press box. The top, top. Can't we're, get, can't get any here. higher, my friend. You cannot get any higher. <laughs> even if you're in Colorado, you can't get even higher than where we are right now. We're up top. Now, folks, if you don't know the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt, he, he likes to exaggerate a little bit. We're not in Colorado. We're only on top <laughs> of the press box. So as uh, Eric Green and the uh, crew talk things over and look at this replay to see if it was an incomplete pass or a fumble. How you missed that reference? <laughs> oh, I got that it. went over your head, yeah, it Phil. It did. Well, well, I think this is an incomplete pass. Out in the elements tonight. Good for my weight loss program. True. That's true. Right. Me too. And we got the tanners on you here for the elements. Working on my tan. <laughs> yes. It's been a cold winter. <laughs> <laughs> Been impressed with North Carolina Central tonight. Their defense has been great. This quarterback, the true freshman, has been outstanding. They've proved that they can run the football. Five rushing touchdowns tonight. So I think Coach Oliver has got a team here that can, can do some things. And on the other side, still Morgan State. I mean, I think they are they could be very good, too, as the season goes on. We've said this about Morgan State for three years now. There's enough talent here to be successful. It's about being consistent and executing. And when you look at North Carolina Central, again, if folks only tuned in to the box score and saw his passing numbers, they'd think he wasn't having a lot of success. But he has been very impressive tonight, not only from his play, but just from a leadership standpoint, mm -hmm. his demeanor on the field. There's a lot of great things that we're seeing tonight from a lot of these young players on both teams. And there's Coach Wheatley. And Coach Wheatley has made some changes. First of all, no cursing anymore, no earrings. The pants have to be pulled up. And he's also asking all his players on campus, if you see a female, to make sure you open the door for them. So he's doing some of those small things and trying to make a change. And he wants to coach football players, but he also wants to, you know, turn them into great young men that will, you know, make a difference after they leave Morgan State. My college football coach, Jerry Baldwin, was the same way. We couldn't curse. You know, we had a lot of rules. But at first you thought, well, why, what does this matter? But it, it helps me 
become a better person and find better words, as he says. And just find better words. Find a better way to say it. Think about what you want to say and not hang on these words that tend to be a crutch and, and are, are bad words. And just everything else just goes to being a good person. Well, Coach Wheatley, his first initial take on Morgan State was too many bad habits. So he said we have to break those bad habits. And he said that's on the coaches in practice. If someone's finger is off, if they have their wrong finger down, they got to tell them about that. They can't let those things slide. And that's what he's trying to do to turn things around here with the Morgan State football program, which has had five different head coaches in the last seven years. So an incomplete pass after the review. Second and ten coming up for Morgan State. D.J. Gallat still in at quarterback. In for DeAndre Harris. Had the touchdown pass to Bailey last drive. Eagles shifting around. They might bring some pressure. Gets the completion. Out of the backfield to Joshua Chase, who's made some grabs out of the backfield. His third catch of the night from the backfield position. That was a great one right there because he was blanketed by the defender. Quick hitter and the completion. That'll move the chains. Xavier Gervet, his fifth catch, leading the way, receiving tonight. Catch number five for the, the big guy, 6'4", 225, the sophomore out of the state of Maryland. Quick hitter there. Tempo's being picked up now, and Bailey, that's his fourth catch. So Bailey, who was shut out till this fourth quarter, now has four grabs. Galat running the offense. Galat started to open the season against Bowling Green, and... Never seemed to get in rhythm. Was just three of nine passing for 24 yards. Coach is going to be upset. Once this is third interception right there for Mr. Brian Mills, what but the receiver night. stopped on the route. Didn't expect him to get the football and gave up on it. But Mills kept playing. Unbelievable! But a great play by Mills. Three interceptions in the game. The Eagles. Oh wow! So. Everyone was talking about how do you feel? How do you feel about leading the country in both, you know, the FCS and FBS in, in takeovers? And they said, hey, we want to keep it going. So what do they do? They get on the bus from Durham, North Carolina, come up here to Baltimore, and one guy, one guy, Brian Mills with a three interception game. So now 16 takeaways on the season and 11 interceptions in this young season. Unbelievable. Again, the receiver gave up on the route, but Mills stayed with it and got the football once again. Totten running into Bear territory. An eight-yard pickup. It'll bring up a second and short. And that was deflating because Morgan State was starting to move the football with some tempo, hoping to get a quick score and make it a one-possession game. And just a deflating play right there by that young man, number 22, Brian Mills, with his third interception. He just won all-conference player off this game alone. Yeah. I mean, he's he'll definitely be the conference player of the week for sure. I mean, you don't even have to vote. Don't have to vote. No. And let the entire MEAC be on notice about this Eagles defense leading the country in takeaways. He has three tonight. And they add to their total on the season, leading the country. Totten on the run, the whistle. So 16 takeaways. Yeah, Totten was hoping that didn't, that rough didn't blow the whistle because he was breaking away from that tackle right there. But this is a great effort and hustle right there by Totten. He's had a fantastic night running the football. So make sure we get this right. 16 takeaways, 10 interceptions, and six fumble recoveries for the Eagles leading the country in takeaways in both FCS and FBS. They'll take that back to Norm, North Carolina. We'll be talking about that. 2.52 to go here in the game. 27-17 lead for the Eagles. Eagles, their first home game last week against Elizabeth City. Held them to 91 total yards. Well, tonight, Morgan State, 329 yards of total offense. But it was those takeaways. 
the red zone stops. Going back to that fourth and one, fourth and uh, one from the one, or fourth and goal from the one, and then the two interceptions in the end zone. And then when it seems like they're getting their offense going, Brian Mills, that guy on your screen right there, strikes again. So we talked about earlier that they have this thing back in Durham, North Carolina for their defense where if you have a takeaway in a game or in practice you get your face on a board, mm -hmm. well, make it a billboard. I was about to say it's going to have to be a billboard. Yeah, make, it, make, it a, make it a billboard when they get back for Brian Mills. I'm talking about just not Bosses. his face. It's got to be a whole body <laughs> shot. Exactly. I mean, it's head to toe Brian Mills <laughs> for this three interception performance tonight in the MIAC opener. You know what I like about the, his interceptions that all three of them he jumped at his highest point to go and get the football. That's something that you practice, and that's a situation where we saw someone and what they did in practice translate to the game. Malachi Washington with the tackle for the loss. Of course, he had the scoop and the score, the defensive touchdown of the night for the Bears. Two forty-seven remain in this game, and North Carolina Central is going to head back to Durham with a MEAC opening victory and their second straight win, and Coach Wheatley and the Bears will remain winless. Next week, they'll travel down to Bethune-Cookman before coming back to Baltimore, Maryland against Delaware State. Bethune-Cookman head coach Terry Sims has a great program going down there in Daytona Beach. Quietly has flown under the radar as far as that program is concerned. They're always competitive. Good offensive line, good defensive line. They can run the football, and they do a great job themselves of pressuring the quarterback. They have a guy, a defensive end, in Marcus Smith, who has done a phenomenal job in pressuring the quarterback, one of the best players in the MEAC at the defensive end position. MEAC's going to be interesting this year. Yes. A lot of teams involved, a lot of teams that could surprise some people. It's Marcus Ford, I'm sorry. Play a lot of surprising uh, Surprising things I think will happen to watch the MEAC this season. I don't think it's going to just be a one or two team race this year. I think a lot of teams will be involved in trying to win the MEAC. Second down. Hand off to Freeman. Big hole and breaks a tackle. These running backs seem to get stronger because they're fresh. He, rotating Totten and Freeman and then we'll probably see Collar here as they get closer to short yardage. They've done a great job in keeping these guys fresh and, and involved in the ball game, and all of them have come in and run with that same level of burst, the same level of vision, balance. All have had big runs in this ball game. Just outstanding performance by that backfield. 326 yards on the ground tonight. 112 for Totten, 85 for Freeman. Richard, the quarterback, is 70 yards. Of course, he had that 62-yard touchdown run. So and Collier has the... Two touchdown runs as well, and Freeman with three, the five rushing touchdowns for the Eagles. Freeman hit pretty quickly at the line of scrimmage. Lamont Hill, the linebacker, the redshirt senior, makes the hit. It's a great job right there in the hole by number 51. Lamont Hill. Outstanding. 151 to go, clock running. The Eagles come to Baltimore and win the MEAC opener with 327 yards on the ground. Their freshman quarterback not looking like a freshman tonight. And the story, their defense. Three more takeaways. Freeman gets up to the 22 yard line. So they'll remain leading the country in takeaways because you know what the story was coming in people were saying man they, they've taken the ball away but look who they play maybe those don't count but it definitely counts tonight with how well they played defensively in intercepting the football but even in certain situations when we saw them have the goal line stand so to me those should count as takeaways as well they lost to Austin P 41 10 they were in the Baltimore area in the second week, they played Towson and lost 42 to three and lost to Gardner Webb 21 12. Those were their three losses. So now you go two and three on the season as they in victory formation. So Totten over 100 yards. Freeman very close to 100 yards rushing. He had 95, 336 on the night. 
So 422 yards of total offense for North Carolina Central. The Bears 329, but they couldn't score in the red zone. The story is the Eagles defense lead the country and take away 16 three interceptions tonight. 10 now on the season. Brian Mills with three interceptions for Coach Oliver, getting his second win as the new head coach at the school where he went to school, North Carolina Central. The Eagles will get the win over Morgan State, 27 to 17, winning the MEAC opener. Safe to say Brian Mills would be my Zara to Playbook player of the game, right? No question about it. <laughs> so for my partner, the Zara the Playbook, Emory Hunt, always a good time to be with you. I'm Phil Shaner saying so long from Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, where the final North Carolina Central beats the Morgan State Bears tonight, 27 to 17. All games airing on ESPN networks are streamed live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.